Hello everybody, welcome to CR6. This is SFSU versus BSU, week five. My name is BizHot. This is the first time you're hearing my voice. It's because I primarily cast the San Francisco State games and I am joined by my very good friend, Saturn. Hello, hello. I am BizHop's co-caster for today. And like you said, we'll be bringing you San Francisco State versus Boise State. Or Boise State B, actually. Yeah, so first map of the day is going to be Clubhouse. This map picked by SS State. We're going to get right into the operator bands as Boise State takes Thatcher off the board. Nothing surprising there. And Montaigne gone for San Francisco. They don't want to play against. They don't want to play against the Monty. You know, you know I have to sympathize with their their uh, their 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 feelings with that. Yeah, rather rather than trying to deal with it, just remove it off the board, just so you don't have to worry about it. The last defender ban for uh, San Francisco taking a little while trying to debate what they want. Vigil ban will come Ooh. out, which is interesting because you it's you would spicy. expect something with more intel potentially, like a Valkyrie or the Maestro. Yeah, that's a spicy band though. You don't see a lot of Vigil bands every, you know, all the time. I like that. Getting risky with the bands and Malusi's off the board. No more Banshees. You know, a, lot, a lot of players would say good riddance. But that leaves operators like Maestro and Mira on the board. Although Echo is currently not being played, unless that was changed and I don't know it. So. We won't, even though Echo is not banned, we will not be seeing Echo played today. All right, we're gonna go to the first defensive round for Boise State, and they're gonna choose to go to CCTV Cash. They're gonna show Mira. Oh, actually, their their site is contested. That's, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> we'll have to see, because this means that it is now random two sites, I would assume. Probably, likely, either Cash or the basement site, because I can't imagine contest bar or gym bedroom site. San Francisco State showing the Ying, but switching off to the Ace just to scare BSU a bit, and BSU will likely do the same, switching off the Maestro for the Attackers need to locate and defuse Oh, they ended up going gym! Alright. So gym, uh, gym bedroom is one of the interesting sites on, uh, on, on Club. It's what most people would consider their tertiary site, one of the weaker sites on the map. However, with a lot of the new operators and utilities and way to play the game, it can be very strong if well defended and well coordinated by the by the def by the defenders. So I'm interested to see what BSU chooses to do here. It looks like they're gonna have a double mirror setup on the bathroom wall to contest Jacuzzi. I have to say though, I am still questioning the contention with BSU because the, if it was a contested site and they did not get the site they wanted, that might put a real damper in this round. Yeah, no, that's that's true. This could definitely not have been what they originally intended to do. But if they if it was, then you know, lucky lucky for them, it worked out. So it looks like Boise State's going to extend their defense all the way into cash. They're gonna have a lot of a lot of utility dedicated to that, like both electro claws, mute jammers. Uh, so. We'll have to see how SS State approach that problem, if at all, if they do. Fasa will begin to work on the Jacuzzi ball, open the Maverick trick with Paid and the Mute holding the cash. Looks like Breezy is on the balcony trying to put some pressure on those windows. And hopefully getting open those castle. And he does open one of the castle windows. But gym bedroom is, or the gym rather, is locked up. But Six successful Maverick trick from Madasa with the Zofia charge of shadows opening up the wall. They will now have to. They will now drone in and see the double mirror window. But I can't imagine that that soft mirror window will be attacked long with the Zofia still having one concussion. Nitro Saw comes out from BSU, doesn't hit anything. Fire does kill Swiss on the win on the window of Master Bedroom. Rudin will begin to hammer away at the castle barricade with Brenner Bear. Right next to it, falling back, and now behind the bomb, ha t having to fight for his life as he is trapped in gym, hiding behind the weight rack. Swapping mags. Sir contesting on the window. Brenner is still stuck behind that weight rack. Doesn't look like Rude knows 
Reaper knows that he has moved off the bomb and it behind the right. Wait, Rug, fire watching Cash covering Rune's back. As Rune will start to fire through that soft wall. It seems like surprised they haven't droned out Brenner yet, knowing that he is still stuck in there and looks like he can't retreat. Far frag grenade will ring out into the shower, hit nothing as the mirror will still be put that window in showers. Looks like the attack has stalled for a bit for SFU as they will be drone. Looks like Burner Barrel will get spotted soon and he will as the drone Reloading. gets shot and Rune will post back up on the window. Again, 30 seconds on the clock for San Francisco State. Ace charge will come out on Cal's barricade, which will likely get shot. Fire gets another kill on the Strippy as Brenner will return on the fire. Shadows kills Brenner and Madasa does push him. Oh, Madasa pushes in gem, begins to plant. Shadows will push showers and kill the Mira. Just on the junkie in construction, throws out the nitro, hits nothing as the plant will go down. Our rune will finish off junkie. Good attack around there from San Francisco State. A little bit of stalling, but they did manage to get it in the end. Boise State not able to win the gunfights. We will have to see if where they will go for their second round, if they actually will elect to go back to cash. And it does look like they will. His audio man. On back, audio sorry. There we go. Yeah. Looks like Biz had a bit of a technical difficulty there, so that's why you did not hear his voice on the cast. But it looks like back. CCTV Cash will be the site for Boise State with S San Francisco State bringing the same lineup as they did before. But BSU trading out the Mira for a Valkyrie. And they did bring both Maestro and need to locate and defuse bomb. I apologize uh, for my audio issues. Hopefully it didn't affect the, the broadcast, you know, too badly. But can you guys hear me now? We can. Okay, perfect. Nope. Gotta commend Boise State for, you know, even if it was contested, maybe they didn't intend to, but to choose it to go to gym potentially, it shows that they have a lot of confidence in their setups. And their, and their teamwork. You know, a lot, a lot of teams will often just choose. They would pre go straight to what they consider their strongest site or their best bomb site. So, you know, it was a risk that Boise State chose to take. Unfortunately, not working out for them. So, now they have to make things work on CCTV. Let's say they will have plenty of information with the Maestro camp being placed above the table there. But it looks and BSU actually holding the garage with that maestro. However, one side of the garage is actually soft, so that could be exploited by San Francisco State as they do like to. Swiss will be roaming around towards the master, probably throwing out some provoke cans as Madasa will begin to Maverick Trick. Cease. Bomb located by attack. Brenner and Junkie on the top of red stairs as Swiss will cash and hopefully hold the site. Uh, making some deagle holes for her nitro cell to fly through later. Assuming she doesn't get uh, killed, Runester will actually open up the long angle from right side garage panel with one of his ace charges. Peering into the rotate that Boise State have made, seeing directly to the bomb site. And we'll have to see where San Francisco State. Here, a minute 45 on the clock as Breezy is is putting pressure on from the balcony window. Camper fire will be taken out by the Maestro as this uh, Claymore is set up to protect runouts. Cushion charges will fly in, but I believe they missed target to have it fly into the garage. Ma Maestro cam will be destroyed by the Zofia explosive charge as the wallet was open. Junkie and Swiss still holding cash minute 50 on the clock for Boise State to hold this and for San Francisco State to attack Dasa on repel aiming at any rotates again the attack is slightly stalled looks like Strippy is being pressured Runester actually does just walk up the stairs with no assist from Boise State and kill the Maestro so that all that is off the board and no more control of the Maestro or no more movement of the Maestro will be available. 
both Swiss and Junkie still take part in cash. Two players from San Francisco State, no, three players from San Francisco State on the TT, on the garage stairs now. Breezy will take out Brenner Bear uh, somewhere else on the map. Smokes will fly out. Good. Karma will take down Breezy. Actually, I thought that was Junkie. Nitro does fly out, but he <laughs> does die before it explodes. And just a flurry of kills from State at the end there to round. Very good. Boise State, unfortunately, just kind of getting uh, crammed in the site and just boxed in and killed. But we'll have to see if they can adapt as they will elect to go to Church Arsenal down below as they will bring Pulse and hopefully try to get a cell kill from below Kitchen. San Francisco State not changing their attack whatsoever, bringing the exact same line they have before. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Okay, sorry about that. I think I, fi I, think I fixed that now, sorry. Uh, but Bishop's uh, computer did have a bit of, a, of a technical difficulty, so he will be back momentarily. So I will be take over as solo casting for a bit as he restarts his computer. Karma from BSU going up to reinforce the hatches as they will bring the castle down and start opening up a rotate into the electrical. Strippy from BSU will reinforce the dirt tunnel as Legion, the Legion of Swiss will throw down goo mines. Looks like Junkie, who did get the stock hatch, will fall back down and hopefully finish placing his barbed wire and Jaeger devices. Doesn't look like BSU is electing for a very hard roam as we do have four players on site. So this we'll see if this turtle shot does pay off for them. We do have Swiss uh, in strip club. But it doesn't look like any San Francisco state members are actually on that side of the map as they have elected for the kennel take to attack from kennel side. And again, four BSU members on site with the pulse under the kitchen looking for that cheeky nitro cell kill with the heartbeat sensor. Fire bursting into cash, taking immediate control with Nomad charges, bringing over the stock to protect for any potential flanks. Standard drone work from San Francisco State joining out the pull table, but we'll have to see if they do join out strip because it looks like Rinser did actually did not elect to go there as we still see Swiss hiding in the lockers now of strip. It does look like Madasa's drone will come in and peek around, hopefully looking to find somebody. She does see the lesion mine there and she, potentially Swiss will get found out. No, Madasa will fall off her drone. Fire does seem to have an inkling that somebody might be here. So he will set up a nomad charge on that strip flank watch. Ho Breezy will begin to sludge open the kitchen, but he will have to be careful again with that pulse down below. I'm not sure if the state... Oh, well, now they know the nitro cell will explode and drop Breezy down to about 45 health as he will be actually be shot through the floor from Karma. Very good awareness there. Unfortunate for Breezy, but he does do his job. Impact grenade through the pool table wall from Swiss will drop Runester and lay down damage, some or slight damage on the... Shadow's Fire will finally take out Swiss, but Swiss has done his job. He at least got one with him. And that was actually one of the primary hard breaches for, for San Francisco State. So this attack has just gotten extremely hard for them to do as Madasa will begin to work on the bar hatch with her Maverick canisters. She does get it open and will begin to drone. 45 seconds on the clock for San Francisco State as they will see it is castled off. And with no sledge, oh, it actually does look like they just opened it with a Zofia explosive charge, losing the drone in process. Both explosive charges now gone for shadows from of the, Zof the Zofia of shadows. As 25 seconds remain, they will likely have to just push this, but it does look like this total strat will actually pay off for Boise State. As they have the Jaeger and Electrical, the castle in church, ready to shoot anybody who comes into this bottleneck. Shadows will actually dump, come down, push down Electrical, could potentially flank his Jaeger. As Fire does take the initial trade, Shadows actually pushes in and gets a kill on Junkie. The, and Fire will return Brenner. They have cash control. Madasa begins to plant. Shadows kills another one. Strippy falls. 
as it is just now down to Karma. What has happened? Ka Karma does kill Shadows. However, it is a 2v1 in post plant position. SF State does not have to push, and Fire will kill Karma. So, a very advantageous position from BSU not paying off as SF State barrel just barrels into the site and when and takes over Church. Unfortunate, no crossfires for Boise State to cut, or nobody was watching the blue stairs, I believe, where Shadows came down, and just he just got a free flank on the Jaeger there. CCTV cache will be the next site as they will return to that site with the same lineup as they did before. San Francisco site not changing a thing with that same lineup. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. We'll have to see if Boise State want to go for more of a rum presence this time as it does seem like they have elected to do very a very turtle style of defense so far, but it has been playing down or it has not been playing well for playing out well for them as a lot, most of these all three of these rounds San Francisco State has been able to get control for the most part with a little bit of stalling and droning and just box in the BSU players and kill them within the last 30 seconds at least. Seconds left before insertion. It does look like they will actually reinforce all Five the garages time as Karma will be the reinforcing all four panels. Not as not to give as ease of access to SF State. But it does look like three players will be on site. Yeah, right, we'll actually be junky this time on the Raptors instead of Strippy all of the uh, the Maestro of Strippy. More ADSs in garage just to give some just to give junkies some more support as Rune will begin to open up these uh, garage walls just to get those long angles. Jaeger in garage might need to move before he gets boxed in. As now he can't run up those stairs or he will get crossed out of line of sight from Rune, but he theoretically could run out through the door and he will. Now playing the entrance of the garage. Oh, he actually does fall back into cash. Could potentially try some try for a run out here, but I can't imagine. That, I can only imagine that Fire has already set up a nomad there with shadows on flank watch. It looks like Fire does join out Drunky in the top rafters. We'll have to see if they just like for a push there. They do actually do spot the Aegis, so they do know two players are in garage now with Junkie watch holding the door now. Very tough angle to contest from San Francisco State. It does actually looks like Breezy is on the balcony again, putting pressure from the CC window. Adasa still working on her Maverick trick, as I can imagine this will go on for much longer. Fire will kill Karma, but Swiss will return onto the Maverick, but the Maverick has done her job opening up the wall at the very least. Fire now has control of bottom of red stairs as the wall has been opened by shadows after Madasa's Maverick tricking. Fire firing, taking a gunfight with Junkie, puts down a lot of damage onto him actually, dropping him to about 25 HP. Brenner playing close on the door as Brunster will finish up Junkie, the low health Junkie with Swiss holding the... Oh, unfortunate timing, throwing out the goo mine as Runester, I believe, pushed up the cash stairs along with Breezy, actually. Could have gotten a free kill there, but uh, quite unfortunate for him. Now, two players uh, to stay on the rafters. Swiss will tag Breezy and drop him down to 50 defeat. health. Oh, this is a nice angle, but he does fire... Does, unfortunately, does not get the kill on him. Brenner still playing that top stairs as he sees... As he's getting pressure from below, and a nade actually Attackers comes out and almost kills him. But Attackers with the bulletproof camera there, his the, the teammates of BSU will be able to call out for Brenner Bear as one as they push up. Fire actually does push up. Two people push up. Uh, Brenner will actually kill the Nomad, but will be returned onto by Shadows. Shadows actually getting both Swiss and Brenner, so it is just up to Strippy now as Rune will begin the plant in the default spot as Shadows is top is the top of stair Attackers red stairs and Breezy on is on the window. Need to it. Very precarious position it, uh, that Strippy is in here as he has three three people to find and he actually has to reload his all which will give away his position and Breezy and SF State will begin to fire through the soft wall. Can't imagine this going Bomb. very well for Boise State in this position at least. And he will be shot through the wall by Runester. Again, a good round from San Francisco State, getting control early. 
and executing their push well. Unfortunate that BSU couldn't kill that Maverick be before that Maverick trick was finished as that would have put a very big hindrance in Boise State's or in SF State's attack. Oh, Alex, I have to thank you so much for taking the last couple of rounds. Uh, uh, but I'm back. Sorry, I apologize again. Audio issues forced me to restart. But here we go. I was trying to keep up uh, talking about, you know, the last couple of rounds. The, for example, the church defense, the BSU, that, you know, I just wanted to put my little two cents about that, even though it was two rounds ago. You know, that should have been a BSU round through and through, but. It was the gun, you know, the gunners on SS State were able to to claw back, you know, from a man advantage with only you know 20 seconds left. They were able to make magic happen. So, you know, hopefully we'll see, uh, we'll be able to see BSU you know, show off their ability to to close out these rounds that that they should by all means win. And we're gonna see them repeat CCTV. Both shadows and fire and fire both playing very well starting out this map as they have been entering very well and Shadow's actually coming in very clutch in a lot of these rounds doing getting a very good flank and finishing off at least two to three players per round when it came down to the last 30 seconds. It does look like BSU did decide to bring a little bit more uh, of the heavier offs with the Rook and the Duck, the French boys, left just to give them a little more sustainability in gunfights, assuming they don't get shot in the head, but more sustained nonetheless. Cameras will come out from Karma onto the side window, or the, uh, the ceiling of the strip, strip club actually. We'll have to see if those get spotted. But it does look like BSU have decided to roam a bit more now, but SF State is nowhere on this side of the on the right side of the map as they have they're still executing their standard attack as they have on cash the last two times they've attacked the site from BSU. Well, it looks like Boise State though, they're gonna get they're gonna show their presence more downstairs as Trippy Strippy brings out some shots through the stock door and trying to see if he gets a lucky uh, wall bang onto fire on the nomad. You know, but I, I believe what you say, I believe if they hold down below much stronger, they'll be able to use vertical play and deny any sort of default plants and, you know, junkie dogs trying to get right up into the action, you know, trying to contest or see if anyone's going to break that storage window, see if he can get to, uh, any free kills, but as a state, not going to give it to them so easily. But also going to get quick to work though, Maverick tricking the CCTV wall, and Roonster is going to open up the... Uh, construction wall. So it looks like this could be a potential split take. CC wall is open now as Shadows will shoot one of his explosive charges into the wall. Looks like Junkie Dog is playing the top of red stairs with the Rook now instead of the Mute and Brenner actually has fallen back from Master to the cache as Breezy will begin to sledge open up from the gym. Strippy will kill Shadows actually, two, uh, one of the heavy gunners down and Karma will actually kill Breezy of the sledge. No trades unfortunately, as I say that Runster actually does find Karma down there. Fire now pushing into construction, one of the heavy hitters of San Francisco State will get shot in the feet actually. Drop down to 50 as he will return some fire onto Brenner of the dock, but Brenner can just heal himself up. Brenner are actually very low on HP now at the 20 HP as they will begin to open the uh, sk skinny construction wall with the ace charges. Four players alive for BSU and three for San Francisco State with two in construction. Fire will take some more damage and drop down to about 20, 20 HP. Uh, looks like Madasa is still full health, but we don't know where she is currently. She might be relocating. Oh, she is actually towards the construction site already, electing to go on the roof. Rooster will actually get a kill onto Brenner. Uh, but two very low HP players, as one of them will fall. Junkie Dog finishes Jack off the fire. Bomb. With Rune actually oh, getting a flank kill on the strippy. Now it's a 1v2, uh, one and Swiss will finish off the remaining two players. That, that was Rooster and Madasa. BSU win their first defensive round. A very much needed round to rally back as they are currently now on a 4-1 deficit instead of a 4-0 deficit. Wow, what a what a round from Boise State. You know, Strippy getting really aggressive, running out of stock to kill Shadows on the repel. 
and one of the other attackers picked off over on the master side giving bs uh, boise state the man advantage very early on and and the trades coming out from boise state you know they didn't even though ss state tried to claw their way back in via mound man count boise state was always there to trade out their teammates you know they were a always able to keep their man advantage so you know now they're gonna go to church arsenal um well, i'm not aware if they repeat is, is, is this their second time going to church arsenal after the first one this yeah, is their second time going down to Church can. Arsenal as yeah, they okay. will elect to switch out the Jaeger for the Pulse so that means no uh, projectiles are now from BSU which could turn very scary for them as they do have four, four frag grenades to deal with and the four uh, grenades of the Zofia launcher, two concussion and two explosive and even the fire and uh, the Nomad of Fires, Flash Grenades, and Air Jabs, so I really don't, I don't necessarily agree with switching off the Jaeger for the Pulse uh, for a potential Nitro Cell kill, as that is a lot of utility wasted. Might have been better to switch off uh, Ella, but you know, I'm not the one playing. We'll have to see if BSU can make this work, as it does look like they will elect for some vertical play, as Karma will be playing cash. So, or you know, logistics. Junkie, so Junkie Dog making that hole, it's gonna require uh ss state to do a full roam clears you know junkie and karma are actually both upstairs but you know last time boise state went to this bomb site they were so close it only came down to the last 20 seconds of the round you know they were up four to three in, in man count but you know ss state pulled off a miracle and were able to claw that uh, round back and win it so they must feel pretty good about this defense, Boise State, if they make slight changes, but Reezy's gonna get himself into an early gunfight with Junkie Dog. Puts a little bit of damage onto the Rook, but Rook's ultimately gonna fall back. He's going to get away with his life, which is exactly what he wants to do. He just needs to waste time. Oh, he is now he is now dropped down from construction into the stock room we'll have to see if he does get cleared out as it does seem it does seem like fire does know that junkie dog has been there as he did see one of his nomad charges shot out but we'll have to see junkie dog is kind of stuck now as the drone will come into stock and likely join him out which which could likely spell the end for him if oh? fire is aware was of that a he should be. was that a mistrum i'm not sure if rude's drone actually full checked stock it looked like he just kind of picked, oh, it's a mist drone. They don't know that Junkie Dog's in stock, but Fire is able to get away. Incredible trigger discipline from Junkie Dog. Oh, does he know actually? Oh no, he looks away at the last second. That siege timing for you. Junkie Dog gets the opening pick for Boise State in this last defensive round. Now they're gonna have to work without one, you know, one of their top fraggers so far and those air jabs. But Karma, on the other hand, still roaming over by, by the, by jungle or strip. You know, he can, he's really close by, and if the attackers aren't aware of his of Karma's presence, he's going to come around to Billiards and potentially find two free kills. He gets one, downs another, and gets away, and hasn't been traded out yet. He's just going to waste a lot more time here. Throwing out Gershmots to help cover his retreat. Going to take a lot of damage. Pre-fires back, but ultimately is going to get away with his life. They're going to pick Runester back up. Junkie Dog's gonna go down, but Madasa gets Karma, you know, tit for tat. Now it's a 3v3, but two attackers for SS State have been lit up. You know, one bullet from a lot of these weapons would easily put them down. But you got three full health defenders, Strippy, Brenner, and Swiss, and a lot of powerful utility. But we're entering the last 20 seconds of the round. They're gonna, SS State's gonna have to make something happen here. As Breezy's gonna make his way down the main stairs and taking care of these castle barricades. Cardiac sensor out, now the guns are gonna come out. Swiss gets the first onto Rune, finishing off already low ace. But there's only five seconds left, and this looks like it's gonna be Boise State. And it is. BSU finishing off their defensive round, only two fours. Not exactly what you wanna see on Clubhouse. Very, very nice that they were able to actually rally back the last two rounds, as it looks like they were having quite the difficult time in the first four, as SF State did take those rounds. But we'll have to see if they can transfer this momentum of those last two rounds onto their attack, as they, as SF State switch over, or as Boise State switches or switches over to the attacking rounds, and Church Arsenal being the first round for. SF State, they will not elect to go to gym bedroom like BSU did. But it actually does look like BSU will be swapping out 
be ace for something if they choose to. SS State actually swaps out the bandit for the maestro. The buck for more soft destruction, I guess, as they might be assuming this will be a basement take. Now, see, the thing about buck, oh, it looks like they're going to switch it, but I was going to talk about if, if Strippy stuck the buck, I was going to mention that, you know, I believe that they probably thought init from that initial defender lineup that there was going to be a CCTV defense. But the thing about buck is that you can, regardless if it's CCTV or basement, there is a place for buck. A lot of teams often will send in a... Uh, their soft destruction like the buck to stock to destroy the cash floor displace a lot of the anchors there potentially get themselves a pick but because it was a defense uh, it was a basement defense you know he could have done the same thing go into kitchen destroy the floor or destroy this hallway you know the exactly. above long the, the, the ceiling above long uh, and it would have it wouldn't have been a bad six pick but last second strippy goes over to the nomad uh, potentially they're worried about uh, SS State's roam game but we'll have to see. It doesn't Five look like SS State wants to roam on this basement site. Uh, Rune's going to get those hatches. But no four players on site for SS State. And Rune still comes back. So it's going to be a turtle defense from SS State. We'll see how BSU, how quick they are to realize that this is what they're going to be up against. Actually, does look like the IQ of Brenner Bear actually was able to sneak a drone down into Moto. Uh, was that did go unspotted uh, by the Cade? Oh no! Yeah, that, that 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 can get them a lot of information late round. So they'll know if, if Cade's gonna try to Cade trick or not off of that drone if that's there. Interesting to see Junkie Dog actually using the G36 instead of the R4C on the Ash. But I can only imagine it's because of that angled grip for the extra fast ADS time. We'll have to see how BSU do this tag as actually SF State is not roaming at all. All five members are on site turtling like BSU did. And we'll have to see how quickly BSU catch on to this before they start blasting open the floor. As, it, as I say that, I believe Swiss starts uh, putting down breaching charges. And does see something, I believe, start shooting out the floor. Well, oh, that's one of those sneaky angles. If anybody playing church isn't careful, that could spell the end for their lives. But, uh, you know, not everyone can be fraggers like you, Alex, with the R4C in hand. So, you know, the G36 definitely has a lot of the, its own advantages. But now that they know that it's going to be a turtle setup, all BSU needs to do is start setting up their execution. You know, information gathered. They're going to know that there's uh, shadows playing in blue, and Junkie Dog's just going to drop oil and try to take the fight. If he can get this early pick, then he's going to set his team up very well. He's going to sneak down very, very close. Three fires out. He wants to get away. He doesn't want to lose his life early on. I just want to point out that BC actually have no like proper hard breaches aside from the Maverick. So that means Maverick is actually gonna to have to open all the hatches. Very good, very good shot by Junkie Dog. On Rooster, we'll remove the Legion and any more goo mines along with that T5 SMG. What a so shot! It... Oh. oh, Junkie Dog's gonna eat a lot of damage off of fire, and fire's gonna take some, but. You know, that barbed wire isn't really in a helpful spot, I don't think. But Shadows can easily just turn this corner and easily take out. Jun oh, but he can't do it. Junkie Dog with the quicker finger and a trade comes out. And it's all just left to Breezy and he's going to quickly fall. BSU with the flawless attack for their first, you know, first attacking round. Holy cow. Junkie Dog going off. Very good fragging by Junkie Dog there. It looks like the lack of hard breach or the Maverick. Uh, didn't matter too much as he did get, or the Maverick didn't matter too much in opening the hatches there. As Donkey Dog essentially killed three players, I believe, on his own there, with the last two being cleaned up by the ch church side push. I was actually expecting if SF State was able to hold a lot better, or if they were actually if they were able to survive a lot longer, that the Maverick might run his run into some issues when trying to open kitchen hatch, but it does look like they just decided to ignore that. Yeah, without the proper utility, uh, you know, Maverick, trying to Mav open the kitchen hatch is just not going to be the play. And we're going to actually see Strippy on the buck this time. Looks like they Defender definitely wanted to bring the buck for a CCTV attack. Cause, uh, you know, after a round like that, I wouldn't want to repeat the, the basement defense. Let's see how... Let's see how the, Boise State uh, approach a CC their CCTV attack. Again, only bringing the Maverick, so they're not opting. With that kind of utility, it doesn't. they're not going to be able to do anything like a like a, split, a heavy split take. 
So I imagine we're gonna see a CCTV garage take. If Junkie Dog doesn't just rush up cash stairs and kill everybody in the process. So. I can't imagine that happening again after it happens once, although I could be wrong. But we will have to see, time will tell, as it does look like Greenstrip will be setting up some magnets for I believe Breezy, who looks like he will be playing the top of rafters. Madasa looks like she will looks like she will be attempting to K-trick the wall, but with the Maverick there, it will be all for nothing if she dies. Yeah, once 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 she knows that it's gonna be a Maverick on that wall, you know, you just gotta move out, relocate, because uh, there's nothing you can do there unless you can somehow take the head off Karma. He's gonna immediately start getting to work on that wall. Broken barricade might have been a run out potential. Uh, potentially, it does look like SF State actually has four members on site. Oh no! You know what? It was that. It was that. That barricade right there for Cash to CC. Located a bomb. Looks like she just broke that and wanted to leave. And uh, Swiss down below quickly in lounge put some shots through the floor. Trying to see if we can open up any lines of sight or move any lucky kills. Bomb oh, it looks like attack. Karma's gonna try to open up the entirety of the CCTV wall instead of just opting to go for one side. And Runester's gonna put some shots into the shoulder of Karma. Unfortunately, doesn't the metal wall doesn't fall away though, so if Karma messed this up, he's not really gonna be able to go and fix his mistake. There's a lot of action down below. The Junkie Dog and Strippy are working down there underneath and lounge and shadows gets the opening pick onto strippy no more buck and he's gonna get away with his life but junkie dog's gonna fall, like run after him and try to hunt down this jaeger and immediate and we'll get the kill so it's a trade four four man count ultimately nothing you know advantage not on either side yet but uh, you know two players in construction that's brenner bear and swiss it looks like they've Abandon the CCTV walls. I think Karma was not able to successfully get that wall open. He's gonna get get to work on the skinny construction wall. Brenner is just trying to get a lucky pick onto anybody playing top cash. And Rune's gonna get aggressive on the CCTV window. You know, if he jumps out, he could get Karma, who's just trying to innocently open in the wall. But Karma, with a nice frag grenade, takes down the Cade of Madasa. And all of a sudden, man advantage is Boise State's. So they're gonna have, you know, but only 45 seconds left. One smoke grenade. Rune's gonna go down, and Junkie Dog goes down to fire. It's a technically a 3v3, but it's actually a 2v3. So it's gonna be on Breezy holding rafters. Oh, but a knife. Swiss walks up the cash stairs and gets fire. And site control is essentially Boise State's. Uh, MVP stock stim onto Rune. Now is gonna eat. Make it a little bit easier for the defense. 2v3. There's only 15 seconds left. Swiss is going to start getting the plant down. Breezy's going to fall. If Rune can find the planter. And he does. Downs him. But the Maverick's not aware. But he will. IQ will make up for that blunder. BSU win two attack rounds on the board. Or like in a row. It's a 4-4 four, four round count. That could have been a very disastrous flank from Rune for BSU as... He was only actually able to get one, but if he was actually able to see all three players, nobody knew that Rune actually went for the flank there, as he, as they were all too focused on Breezy on the rafters. But it does look like uh, San Fran is actually calling for a rehost here. So we'll have to see what the issue is uh, down the line in a few minutes. Yeah, so it looks like there might be some, some technical issues on SS State's side, but you know, this is this is very interesting. It's not often you see a lot of um, well, I mean, what we're seeing right now is a very attacker sided villa. You know, as a state on attack, we're able to win four of their attack rounds. And right now, BSU two rounds in have won both of their attack rounds. So, I mean, there's still a lot of utility like Cade or Bandit, you know, a lot of denial ops like that. And BSU's only opting to take Maverick. I mean, why do you think that this is be this is so attacker sided so far? Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you. I honestly expected a lot more defensive wins uh, coming out from both teams so far as Boise State, like you said, was actually able to get their first two attack rounds like San Francisco did their first four. And they do equalize the squad now to 4-4. Four, four. So we'll have to see if the momentum continues for Boise State as this is their fourth round in a row now. 
I mean, yeah, this and if they if Boise State was on a roll, if they felt in in a groove, this Rios honestly could just put them out of it. You know, honestly, when you take when you know rehosts are necessary, you know, because we we'll always have technical issues, but. You know, it can always ruin the flow of your game. If you feel good, if your team is feeling good, having a break like this sometimes can, might shift the, the tide back towards SF State. Yeah. This will give, give, give SF State some time to reset and actually give BSE some time to potentially cool off from their current hot streak. But we'll have to see what the issue was in a few moments. Uh, who do you expect? Yeah, so we'll we'll send this to break. Uh, we'll be back with the match. So stick around. Welcome back. We're just coming off that rehost, going into round number nine. SSD have yet to want a defense, so we'll see what their plan is here. If they're going to repeat CCTV or basement, if they're going to change up some of their operators. It looks like, and it looks like they're going to go CCTV. Oh, they're going to show Goyo. Okay, I like that. That's spicy. We'll have to see if they do s decide to stick that, or if they might swap it off to go back to the smoke that they're familiar with. But it does look like BSU will bring the same lineup as they have been doing, with only the Maverick as the hard breacher for their team, and electing to go for a much more fragging-oriented team with the heavy guns of Ash, Sophia, Buck, and Q. Yeah. I like Fire Stick in the Goyo. Been playing with them recently. He's a Goyo main recently, so I love. I want to see what he does with that vector in hand, because I know he's probably is taking the vector. You know, but also the, I was gonna. I kind of had a thought. It's the. I feel like it's the meta we're in right now. What maps that we would previously consider defender favorite, and you waste a lot of time, and you know what you hear like the 20 second meta, often is solved by just forcing your way in and taking gunfights. Uh, you know. Off the top of my head, see, you see teams like TSM, some, you know, they have the uh, raw ability to just, you know, 
they can't get a wall open or something went wrong, they just funnel in and win their gunfights. And right now, it seems like Boise State's pulling off some of their own TSM takes. Just like last round, they couldn't get the CCTV wall open. They rotated and were able to just take take cash from construction and win those gunfights. So we'll see if SS State will be able to adjust to that sort of that aggression. You know, we already see some changes. You know, fire switching off from smoke to Goyo and. Uh, Madasa switching from the K to, to Bandit. They're already switching to some some weapons that you know might be better suited for them. And Karma's al already going to go onto the CCTV wall. He's going to try to get it right this time. Hopefully they don't have to resort to rotating. If he can get this wall open. And it sounds like Strippy on the buck is going to get busy himself. Imagine, yeah, he's already in stock. You know, no hesitation. Because the, the door's also been barricaded, so BSU has been given free reign of stock. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. You always want to make attackers feel uncomfortable when, they, when they're when trying to take the map control. But Junkie Dog's just going to open up that barricade. He's looking for a fight. He wants to see... Oh, and a deployable shield's actually been dedicated down to a lounge. So it looks like it looks like the defenders are want to hold down below. We'll see how long that lasts. But Fire takes the fight with Junkie Dog and immediately goes down. So they've lost the Goyo, and that's a, a potential C4 off the board. You know, that... And Karma is successfully going to make the metal fall away on the right side. Doesn't have any help, though, so he has to put in some extra work to try to make that wall fall away. And that Which is very, very dangerous if a defender gets lucky. Ooh, shots from Madasa almost connecting on the head of Karma. That could have been huge. Very dangerous. Dangerous magic tricking coming out from Strippy, or not Strippy, from Karma actually, as BSU, uh, as he will get away with his life, but BSU does take over construction as Breezy will return onto Junkie Dog, making it a 4 4 now. Yeah, so even men count 4 4. It looks like the attackers, though, have still done the same, you know, following the same attack plan that they had last time. They're gonna take master they're gonna take construction looks like they might want to open up that skinny wall karma sounds like he's getting to work on that right away but breezy gets the pick onto strippy no more buck no more vertical play so but swiss immediately equalizes onto madasa you know there, there's some good picks coming out from both sides but neither side can seem to retain the advantage but was he just gonna walk into construction and a trade comes out rune for karma and Breezy goes down to Brenner on the CC window. It's just shadows on the flank. And if they have, if Boise State has a drone on this, then they're gonna know exactly where he's coming from. He only has one avenue, and the Swiss is gonna get that plant down successfully. They know. Swiss pops up, takes the head off shadows. BSU take three attack rounds in a row, and now lead for the first time this map. Five consecutive rounds in a row in. Even after the rehost, very heavy momentum from BSU. It did not look like that rehost hindered them at all, as the as if state will return to Church Arsenal uh, for their third defensive round. And we'll have to see if they can bring this back. Uh, smoke coming. Oh no, this is actually never mind. <laughs> My mistake. Yeah, they they haven't been able to make any of this work. It seems like they lose information. Like the moment. Uh... I believe the cash player died. It seemed like they had no idea that they had already taken control of cash and or had no idea where they, the attackers were. Uh, a lot of the defenders seemed to blindsided by their position. And so, you know, hopefully they'll be able to... You want to see some some form of information for, like, information gathering for for the defense right now. They just don't have it. But on, on the other hand, it's... An, these are excellent takes coming up attackers from Boise State. You know, they're they're getting the trades. I just want to point out that Shadows was very late on the flank and he didn't really do that much I believe that last round. He just kind of came in towards the end. Uh, he didn't put any pressure on on the lounge player or on the stock player that, which was Junkie Dog and uh, Strippy who, who were opening up the soft floors from down below. Now that's very you true. You have to wonder what was he doing? Yeah, when you're when you're roaming, you always want to make an F, like impact the attackers in some some way, shape, or form. You don't want to just sit in a corner, far off the map, hope they don't drone you. I mean, if that happens, then that's wonderful. But you actively need to waste time, try to take a fight, get a pick, play your life. So 
it's unfortunate that you know fire hat didn't seem to have that support of shadows down below in lounge and you know fire got picked off for free but we're gonna go back to church arsenal and we'll see if there's gonna be some form of roaming rune's gonna fall back to sight uh it doesn't look like they're gonna hold blue at all but if i saw correctly shadows right now is is running around i think he he, he got himself over to strip now th this could be great this might not be great. Uh, you know, he, he's in strip now. He's pretty much trapped with only one way out. And if if the attackers do a good job of holding him here, holding Shadows here, then he's not going to be able to make an impact on this round at, again at all. Well, looks like the droning of BSU will be coming through just to clear him out. And they do spot him. And Ooh, we'll have no. to see if he's able to get out with his life, which I highly doubt as his avenue of escape has been trapped and he will have to fight for his life. Looks like Breezy oh, was actually cool. upstairs and might be coming down to support Shadows in his escape. But it does look like he was actually doing that as well. Uh, as if they actually deciding to run this time and not turtling with two players actually off site now. Breezy could definitely help out Shadows here by getting this pick onto Karma on the Maverick. It's gonna be. Ooh, but he's gonna take some shots, and if he's not careful, he might run his way right into another uh, Boise State attacker, and he does. Takes a lot of damage for his, for his troubles, but he has no way out this time. That's Swiss on the zone. He's just going to swing on to Breezy and take his life. That's man advantage for BSU. And, but they still know that Shadows is over in Strip. And if they hunt this man down, then it's a 5v3 on site if Shadows cannot get a pick. It does look like Brenner Bear will be the one hold. Oh, actually, no, it's Junkie Dog actually holding through the soft, uh, soft door as Brenner Bear is droning. It does look like Junkie Dog does wants to finish off this Jaeger as the drone will fly into strip. We'll have to see if Shadows can take the fight here. Oh, unfortunately, turning away from the moment that Junkie was on to peak as Junkie will finish off Shadows. Three, three, two, five now. Two man advantage for BSU as Strippy will begin to work on the floor and Brenner will be taking out the utility as well. Not With that, I can to work out. We have to pay attention to time though. 35 seconds and I believe uh, the f smoke still has all of his canisters. Oh, so he only has one left. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's actually that's his two. last smoke canister. And 25 seconds left. This could, this could be bad, you know, for SS State. But Fire gets the first pick for SS State onto Swiss. That's Zo off the board. And Junkie trades out Rune. Junkie with the entry onto the players in Church and Madasa is leaving her in a 1v3. But only 10 seconds left. Brenner Bear's getting the plant down. 47 bullets left in the Alda, the diffuser going down, she'll have three bodies to find. Puts a lot of bullets into Strippy, but no information, and Junkie Dog caps off round number 10. BSU's on match point, nothing seemingly working out for the defenders of SF State. Nothing at all indeed, although if Madasa just peeked out a little more, could have gotten the planner and potentially won the round there. But unfortunately, could not see. It. They do not have the X-rays that we do, so she couldn't have known that, unless there was a camera there. But I can't imagine, as they did have the Zofia and the Ash probably take out all those cameras already. Gym bedroom now being tried for SF State, even though they could go cash or basement. However, those sites have not been working, so they might as well try the gym bedroom and see how it goes. You know, might as well try bar stock at this point if you really want to throw a wrench in the in the and like, oh my god, wow, they really went there. The surprise factor. So, you know, this this is SF State's last hope. They lose this round, they lose map one, and this was their map choice. After this, they have to go to uh, coastline. Um, you know, not a map we've actually seen from SF State this season so far. So who knows if they have anything Attackers there up their sleeve. But you know, you, it doesn't feel good when you lose your own map choice. So SS State, they're trying to pull up, you know, get they're trying to they're trying to pull one over Boise State right now by by picking Jim Bedroom. Definitely, as we'll have to see how well this works out for them, as it does look like they're committing utility to protect, uh, I believe that's Madasa, who will be attempting to ban a trick, but BSU is not falling away from their uh, lineup as they will be. The I believe they brought the same lineup for the most part for almost every attack. Uh, yeah, the only the only difference was that first attacking round, Strippy switched over to was on Nomad rather than Buck. So, SF State, 
going to extend all the way over to Cash. They're going to dedicate Mute Jammers, Barbed Wire, three Mute Jammers. All four Mute Jammers over in this Cash construction area. So, they're going to... Madasa's going to hold Cash with her light, but, you know... It doesn't deck dick that doesn't dictate BSU actually need to go uh, to and take control of cash. We've seen SF State on their attack round of gym bedroom. All they focused on was the jacuzzi gym side, and we're able to successfully win that attack. Karma gonna start working away his magic, trying to maverick trick that uh, jacuzzi wall. He's gonna pull the nade out, see if he gets a pick onto Runester the bandit. Does a little bit of damage. Gets a battery, and he's gonna hear Rune put another battery down, pull the second nade. Oh, Rune, you are brave. Second nade misses, though. It doesn't deal any damage, and Rune's still gonna hold aggressive. Swiss, elsewhere on the map, is gonna take the head off Mozzie. That's Breezy gone. You know, has, you know, Breezy hasn't been huge on this map. You yeah. were hoping to see a little bit more from him, especially in these last rounds. But now early man advantage for Boise State. Chat. Again, once they moved or once they moved on the defense, that does look like Shadow's Bob quite quieted down right. a bit too from his very hot streak on the attack round as the Zofia. But Strippy will begin to looks like do some self destruction. Rooster will kill Karma on the wall finally, but it does look like he was able to make the fo middle fall away. So uh, someone from BSU could easily rotate over to the Tuesday and get that open. It looks like we're going to take another fight with Brenner Bear in bar, but lose a lot of his health and do none. Uh, Shadow's oh. actually getting a double kill on the Swiss and Junkie, so Ash and Zofia off the board with just Strippy and Brenner Bear left. Looks like looking t to push up main stairs, which is a funnel point. The proximity alarm will give away his position as he gets the fall. Run up the run up the stairs and Runester will finish him off for a double kill of his own and Fire will finish off Brenner Bear. San Francisco State rally back and we'll have to see if they can bring this to overtime or if Boise State will wrap it up and we will <laughs> move on to coastline. Wow, what a round. What, you know, then that their shadows showing up right now for his team, getting two huge picks and you know, all he had to do was trade trade out Madasa, you know, let her go down, and get two picks for myself. So, great plays coming out for the defenders. Able to it seemingly that round seemingly they caught BSU with their pants down and were able to capitalize on that rather than them being capitalized upon. So, Match point still for BSU. This is their BSU's last opportunity unless they go to overtime. You know, if they win it now, it's over. But if SF State win this round, it's going to go to OT. And they're going to choose to go to Church Arsenal uh, for this defense. Their final defense of regulation. We'll have to see if they decide to do their total strat from Attackers the very early part of their bomb. defense or if they would like to roam like they did with Shadows and Breezy. Hopefully, hopefully more successful this time with Shadows uh, not being stuck in strip. <laughs> uh, we'll have to That's see true. what we'll have to see what happens. As uh SF State's normal setup coming out uh, doesn't look any doesn't look too different from last time. You know, I, I something I kind of wanted to talk about, like you, five round five attacks from Boise State. You yeah, notice they're bringing the same lineup. Doesn't matter CCTV, if it's basement five or jet. They're bringing go. the same uh, setup. They're only bringing the Maverick. So. You have to think, you know, with only one hard breacher, only one kind of hard breacher, what can we change about our defense to, to combat that? You know, because the defenders are bringing their same lineup that they have every single time that they've gone to their specific bomb site. You know, Madas on the Maestro with the impacts with the full intention to trick the kitchen hatch. But the thing is, is that they're not trying to open the kitchen hatch. You know, every time, both times that they've attacked the church arsenal, it's been through Moto and it's been through blue. So you have to wonder why have, why are they not making such a bigger, a more drastic change in maybe a different operator, uh, aside from the maestro uh, in addition, or, you know, better, better prep to actually hold a church. Uh, but, you know, that's a discussion for later. Right now, Boise State has control of the first floor. Oh, no, they don't. Breezy on the cash stairs takes down the Zofia early, and he's going to get away with his life. He's just going to walk on. He actually might hold storage, but he no, he's just going to go right back to site. And now in a safe spot, but Junkie Dog looks like he's, she's going to try to get the take the fight, and he she wins it against Breezy. Oh, my. These trades from Boise State. Junkie Dog able to just... 
able to just equalize the man count. It does not matter. But Runester gets strippy. No more buck. Oh, but Runester is still on the top floor as well. It looks like they thought that they had top floor control or, you know, all the roamers taken Attackers care of, but they didn't. Bomb. Frag Grenade comes out from Karma, misses. C4 Attackers out, doesn't hit anyone, but Mendoza down Junkie Dog. That's the Ash off the board, and that's a huge pick if you're SF State. There's only a minute, 15 left, 4v2. Limited utility, only one Frag Grenade left, but a Blowtorch maybe cre can create some lines of sight, but Boise State's gonna have to make something happen here. Does look like they're just gonna uh, ignore Rune on the Rome and just elect to go for the storage push down blue, but they will be met with contention of Shadows, who is playing close to the wall actually. Frag Grenade flies out, gets eaten by an ADS that could have been disastrous from Adasa. Oh, does not check his corners, and Karma will fall to Shadows, and is now up to Brenner Bearer, detonating a breach and charge onto the church wall, but will be spotted by the Maestro Cam. Swings in and take, uh, take a little bit there, but Shadows will finish off. Brenner Bear and SF State rally back two rounds to bring it to overtime on Clubhouse. And a much better defensive performance from SF State that time around. Granted, not a huge change in their strategy, but this time it seemed that Boise State might have felt a little overconfident. They didn't think that there were any roamers from SF State, but those two roamers, you know, that oversight, it, it came to bite them. Indeed, uh, uh, losing the Zofir early to the Bandit, which takes off her breaching charges and the t the impact grenades and the concussion. So a lot of utility loss uh, from BSU, but uh, they were able to equalize and bring it bring it back to even. But unfortunately, could not finish off in the finish it off in the end. Church Rational again for San Francisco State as BSU will not bring the IQ this time. Instead, they will bring the Jackal. They do not want another oversight like that last round. Definitely. They feel as if, you know, our attacks are good. They're, they're, we're executing these flawlessly. Attack we're taking care of their roamers. But one down. round where those roamers come to bite you, they don't want that happening again. And the Inox tracker from Jackal is going to guarantee you whether the information. They'll know if there's a roamer and they'll know exactly where that roamer is. So, strong utility, and we'll have to see whether or not, you know, if, if SF State will one elect to roam this round, or how they react to the Jackal once they know that he is on the field. Yeah. Hopefully, if there are two roamers, they decide to help each other out, try to do a little bait and switch. One person gets checked and baits the Jackal into uh, the line of fire of the other roamer. But we'll have to see, like you said, as it does look like there'll actually be two roamers again. The Rune and Breezy again, with Shadows on site of the Jaeger. Uh, Rinster setting up some lines of sight in Kitchen for himself uh, up into Logistics, as he will. As he seems like he wants to play in Vertical. And Breezy is up there in cash to help him out. Ooh. Strippy knows that Rune last round was playing on those top main stairs, so he's going to put some shots through that window. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a full-on roam clear potential from BSU. As Buck opens up the jacuzzi wall and Breezy's going to go down very early on. You don't want to see something like that from your roam. Now the problem about roaming on Clubhouse, in my opinion, is it, it's very easy to get across on, on a lot of your retreat, your avenues of retreat. So right now Breezy and Runester are pretty much stuck as Junkie Dog confirms the kill onto Breezy. If Rune can get this pick onto Strippy, it's probably best if he just falls back to sight and play a lot more of his utility rather than waste more time. Because they've already wasted a minute here. So it might be best if he can just somehow get his make his way back to sight. Well, I have to see as I'm not sure if BSU figured out Rune is still roaming as it does look like they're just kind of ignoring him at the moment so they Attack might not know and again it could be disastrous but Swiss has pushed down the blue stairs into electrical and is now contesting fire first gas grenade comes out at a minute 30 actually so uh this very burning utility early uh burning San Francisco State utility early sorry Oh, it actually does look like Junkie Dog has gone on that Rune is still roaming as he is the top of Red Stairs. Oh, he's getting Jackal Pain. He is now getting Jackal Pain, like he said, and looks like Junkie Dog will go and hunt him down. Swiss still in Electrical, throwing out his drone now. Uh, it does look like Burner was actually able to pinch Rune. Oh, Rune swings and takes off the Jackal, and now it's a free escape for him. 
I believe it's a free escape for him. Uh, he will run into the bug. Shadows finishes off Swiss and Electrical in four to three now. As Junkie Dog will equalize, bringing it to a three versus three. As he is, he is the one now in Electro Karma will drop down into Moto Hash with 40 seconds left. Priming a frag grenade, throwing it hits nothing. Takes some damage from uh, fire, I believe. Ooh, Rune's gonna need to come back fast and make his make his presence known, and he does. He takes down the Maverick, and he's still above the Moto Hatch with only 25 seconds left. It's just down to Strippy and Junkie Dog, and as I say that, Fire takes down Strippy. It's just Junkie Dog in a 1v3 situation with only 20 seconds left. No Diffuser in hand, no more ways to gather information. And as that time whittles down, he's gonna make his way into church and immediately meet his end to Rune Sir. As the state take the lead once again and put themselves on match point. Big impact plays from Rune, being able to kill that Jackal and then rotating all the way down to Bar to get the flank on Karma and Strippy, who dropped into Moto Hatch as time was running down. Unfortunate that he just was able to left, he was kind of left to his own devices after BSU was able to clear out Breezy. Uh, they just kind of left him up there in Master. Yeah, no, like definitely. Usually when you roam, I feel like if you roam on Clubhouse, you roam in pairs, you know, you cannot, if you roam by yourself, that's pretty, you know, that's not going to work out very well. So BSU, maybe it's, might have seemed like they assumed that there was only going to be one roamer. You know, it wasn't only till later in the round, probably around a minute 30 left, that Brenner Bear on the Jackal was able to find Rune's footprints and, and you, you know, tell his team, hey, there's another roamer, we got to take care of this guy. But Rune making huge plays, taking out the jackals. And now you suddenly can't because time is winding Defender, down. Your you're you're putting the attackers in a, in a tough position. You know, do we do we pull off our execute to try to hunt this guy down, or do we continue to push and just watch our flank? So, however, we're on match point right now. And BSU is going to go choose their defensive site. They're going to go to CCTV and they're going to bring both Rook and Doc, uh, the two operators they had brought the only time that they had successfully won this bomb site, I believe. If my memory serves me correct. I believe you are right. We'll have to see if SF State is able to take this and actually win it, or will we left. see the 15th and final round of this map? Junkie Dog actually going, going for a spawn and peak and storage. We'll have to see if this does get droned out. It does look like it does, oh, as you can no, hear the little drone it, driving around. There, there's no way, there's no way that they don't know that this window is open. Junkie Dog's just gonna pre-fire and get away with his life. Not, unfortunately, Cress of State not losing any of theirs. Rune's gonna make quick work now, opening up one of the garage panels and get into a fight with Junkie Dog, but he takes most of the damage. That's an early engagement. Boise State really getting aggressive here, and Rune goes down. It looks like the, the roamers of BSU are trying to, are definitely just trying to take fights right now. Get the early man advantage and Rune goes down. It looks like Strippy wants to confirm this kill. Going all the way to Strip. You know, if, if no one's here to help out Rune. Or if they don't, aren't aware that this could be a potential play. Then, you know, he's going to get himself two free kills. Barricade goes down. Rune's just going to get right back up. It looks like they know I... that the Strip door is open. So, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Breezy will actually find Junkie Dog after opening up the front door of Clubhouse as Shadows and Fire push into stock, or just fire now actually. That's and a huge pick. Yeah. yeah, that's BSU's top fragger for the most part of this game. Gone, and Rune will be picked back up with very little health as oh, Karma no. will be playing under the Bomb located by stairs. Uh, oh no. If what? they don't drone Karma. Oh if they no. Don't drone them, this will be disastrous. Or, ooh, Swiss actually going for an aggressive peek. As there Karma will fall and kill, Karma will kill Breezy and fall down into the oil pit that is sledge off the board for SF State. And Strippy is still lurking around in the bar. That, that's a huge pick for Karma and another missed drone coming out from SF State. You hate to see it. There's only a minute left and still a 4v4. Karma's gonna get stimmed up from Brenner Bear right now. And though, but it looks like they're gonna try to take control of Garage. Karma's made his way back to site, but Swiss is still in rafters. They haven't cleared him out. Karma's immediately gonna get back into Garage to help out the presence and fall right back down oil as Swiss takes down a Runester. Now, now man advantage is in the defender's hands. 
But as I say, that strip immediately goes down to fire. 3v3, 35 seconds. The attackers haven't cleared out Raptors. And, Ra and Madasa goes down. That Swiss still in the Raptor. That Legion putting in a lot of work as Shadows getting into a gunfight and downs him. Does he know that? Oh, but it's Brennerberg approaching with the aggression. And BSU forced this to round 15. We're going to see all every single round in order to dict to find out our winner for Clubhouse. We'll have to see if San Francisco does go gym bedroom as that was the only successful site that they did win aside from their church arsenal holds. But it does look like they're they're currently going to choose CC. Oh, as I say that, nope, oh. they will be going gym bedroom as their final. Uh, they will let the site of gym bedroom decide their fate in this round. And we'll have to see if they can uh, win it like they did last time, or if BSU have figured it out and will be able to take SF State's map pick that is Clubhouse. It all comes. Yep. It all comes down to this. You know, Attackers there's a lot of aggression coming out from Boise State. A lot of that last round was one off of them taking the fight. You know, peeking things you normally wouldn't, and and you know, just. SS State wasn't prepared for that aggression. They got to keep their guns up. And, you know, after after 14 rounds, I've, you'd imagine, you know, hey, these guys just like to swing in and take a fight. So let's keep our guns up and be ready for it. So, I mean, yes, this was their first defensive win. So we'll see how, we'll see one, how Boise State adjusts to attacking this the second time around, or B, how SS State or use the site to close it out for themselves here on map number one. Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. It does look like the same positions will be played. Madasa will be holding cash with that mute and shadows for some extra support in that construction. As fire continues to uh, renovate a little bit with that super shorty of his, but it has to consistently reload as the super shorty does only have three bullets. Rune throwing down some pests. Or no, Breezy throwing down some pests at the main stairs, so Rune does not have any contention from the drones as Karma will begin to Maverick trick the wall again like he did last. And we'll have to see if those fragrant does actually catch Rune this time. Or if Ooh, a C4 out oh. gets Karma! Whoo! What a throw from Runester. A throw in the good respect. <laughs> but being able to finesse the Nitro Cell through that small crack that is the Maverick hole and destroying the hard breacher of karma for BSU. Now, that means no reinforced walls can be opened. They literally have to funnel in through doors and windows. We'll have to see if they'll be able to win their gunfights. If yeah, BSU you know, will my, be able to win their gunfights. One of my favorite parts of that that uh, exchange there is it's extremely hard to throw a C4 through a map hole if it's electrified and get it through successfully. So he, Rune actually shot his own battery beforehand, but it looks like it's going to be a really hard push onto the cash players. So they're opening up the castle barricade in construction. They're trying to isolate Madasa and Shadows. They're really just trying to pinch out Madasa here and take control, but they cannot open any of the walls like you said before. But there's a crossfire being held here from Fire, Madasa, and Nick. But Breezy takes down Strippy. That's the buck off the board. It's now 5v3, Attackers and Breezy's just going to be able to run away for and play his life. But it seems like Boise State might have actually given Attackers up on trying to take cash. And as I say that, Madasa takes down Junkie Dog. The Ash is now gone, and it's just left to Brenner Bear and Swiss. That's the Jackal and the Zoe. Some utility. No smoke grenades, though, from Brenner Bear. Only a Claymore. In less than a minute, ha they, they're going to have to just walk, walk in and take one of these fights. And as I say that, Swiss immediately hops in to Jim. But Runester's going to know. But he's going to lose that gunfight to Swiss. No diffuser in hand, actually. That diffuser was dropped over in CCTV. And Fire picks up Swiss. And it's all down to the Jackal with four kills to find. And only 35 seconds to find them. He's going to hop into CCTV. And, you know, not this is I, looking whew. grim. A, a tall task to ask for Brenner Bear. 20 seconds, and he will be finished off by the Mossberg 590 of Madasa as SF State rally back and be able and have won their map choice of Clubhouse, coming back from a 4 6 deficit to win in overtime, with Boise State actually winning six rounds in a row after. That. After 
an amazing attack uh attack run. Yeah, you you said it, Alex. Th those were two great performances from both both sides, you know. The attacks from BSU were so dominant, but you know, when it mattered most, SF State were able to clutch it out, winning their last two defenses of regulation, winning their first, I believe, first, de first defense of, of overtime, yeah, first defense and of then overtime. finish it off on Jim Bedroom, seemingly one of their best defensive setups for Clubhouse. But that's the first map. And next, we're going to go to Coastline, which is Boise State's map. So I'm excited to see what Boise State's, with their level of aggression, I'm excited to see them on Coastline. It will be a very, Coastline is very much a very loose style, aggressive push peak angles type of map. And that's what Boise State have shown so far to be very good at. We'll have to see as if State is up to the task of challenging those gunfights and taking those aggressive peaks. But again, I just want to, uh, pivot back to clubhouse real quick that last round could have been very could have went very differently if rooster did not get that nitro cell kill on karma that wall would have gotten open or that wall likely would have gotten open and we could have seen it something very different yeah so that's that's very true alex a huge impact play from rooster but we got coastline coming up for you next and we're going to send it to a break so stick around we got coastline
And welcome back, everybody. We will be going to Coastline now. BSU's map choice as they will be starting on the attacking side and San Fran on the defense. SF State starting their first ban. We'll have to see what they choose. They elect. They usually like to ban Thatcher, but I can't imagine them banning Thatcher on the map like Coastline. As I say that, they proved me wrong and they do ban Thatcher. They pulled one over you, Alex. Thatcher off the board, but that kind of frees up a ban for BSU. A lot of teams like to ban Thatcher, so usually one team will take it over the other. So we'll see what BSU, now kind of with a free attacker ban, see what they take care of. A Nomad. Nomad ban, not surprising. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming with that ban, they're gonna be trying a lot of their aggression, uh, their aggressive plays like the Renos, like the Peaks. So, that, but that does leave Montaigne up for BSU to use as well as, uh, we'll have to see if they actually use Montaigne as it was banned last time. So that operator is up as they will actually go for the smoke ban oh! as well. Just, just proving further that they want to go for these fast aggressive oh plays. They God. do not want, they don't want to be delayed. I had to and, get up from my desk. This is spicy. Yeah. Violence and aggression is the recipe for PSU as SF State will ban the Valkyrie just to deny any intel, uh, run out intel for PSU. So, even from these vans, we can already predict a very aggressive game. Oh my goodness, yes. Boise State, they just want to flood through those doorways, and when they're on defense, they want to flank, they want to peek, they want to do everything. This, this is going to be exciting. And with SF State on defense, First, we get to see a lot of that uh, opening uh, aggression from Boise State, as we're gonna go to Hookah Billiards. It does look like SF State is responding to the aggressive operator picks in kind with Ella and Legion, and of course the Jaeger for the projectile denial. BSU, again, going for a very heavy, aggressive gunning comp with the IQ Zofia and Ash that hasn't changed. Ace with that beautiful AK-12 for the hard breach on the wall if needed and gridlock just for flank watch because is, Nomad is banned. It is kind of funny, uh, you know, Boise State's the one to remove the Nomad from play, but they're going to bring the gridlock. Uh, so, I mean, no shotgun coming out for SF State, so they're going to have to use the impacts of Madasas to make their rotates, but Fire, you know, I'm sure that man is happy. I'm talking to him, he just wants to get off smoke sometimes and he gets to go onto the Ella with that 40 round scorpion and that's one of those guns it's like you either love it or you don't it's one of the it's a tough to use weapon so we'll see how those gershmots come into play rather than having those toxic babes 10 seconds to insertion definitely as it does look like PZ is chasing down a drone from Brenner destroying it instead of capturing it and Shadow's uh, still setting up in Aqua as he lays down his barbed wire. Now we'll have to see if the attackers actually do go for that shock and all strat of storming the site like immediately. But it does just look like they're drawing at the moment, trying to collect some intel before they do. Very little site presence from SF State with Rune, Fire, and I believe Breezy off site, leaving only Madasa and. Leave just Madasa on site. Shadows is, actually, is over in Aqua. That's behind Aqua Bar. That's not a nice place to play. And Swiss opens up the game for us, taking down a room. That's the bandit no more. And they're gonna keep droning out the roamers down below. Fire's just gonna try to get away with his life here. There's only there's only been like 45 seconds off the clock, and there's been a lot of action. Boise State players taking easy control of down below the bomb site using vertical play to their advantage, but it's Strippy on the roof, hoping to catch off any defenders, making an unfortunate rotate back. You know, one of the things about Coastline is that open center, that courtyard, you get angles from the roof to a lot of different places on the map, cutting off a lot of different rotations. And I say that Swiss is gonna try to get aggressive onto cool vibes, but he's gonna fall away. He's ultimately like, I don't need to take this fight. I'm just gonna scare the player a little bit. And like we predicted, BSU taking very fast control with their aggression as already in the building. Breezy returns on Swiss, making it a 4 4 now, uh, killing him on Aqua Balk, I believe. Yeah, uh, that, that's a nice pick. Yeah. 
And Fire has returned to the top of Cool Vibes. As we see, I believe that's Karm. Oh, that is Karma on the big window. I believe Junkie Dog is repelled on the Hoopa window as well. Track Stingers will come out to cut off any rotation back through the Aqua as Junkie Dog repels upside down, hoping to see anybody playing that uh, pool, uh, pool table. As Madasa is prone in Hoopa, hoping to not get shot, just holding her Alda in hand, waiting for somebody to walk into her line of sight. Looks like we're going to be seeing a hookah take here. We'll see how the defenders respond to it. Ooh, Karma sees the shifting maestro and puts enough bullets to drop her, and she is gone. Hey, Selma's out from Strippy, taking out a lot of fire's cover. There's an, but there's an evil eye inside, and a wall bang from Shadows onto Brenner Bear, equalizing the man count at a 3v3. So this plant is going to go down. That's Strippy on the ace. Uh, oh, and a C4 down below from Breezy takes down the planter and fire gets Junkie Dog. It's just left the Karma with only that F90 gets the first pick onto fire. But there's only 10 seconds left. She has to go for kills or get the plant down. She elects to go for kills, which is doable. Only two bodies to find, but she won't find one. That Shadows ends off the first round strong for SF State. That was looking scary for San Francisco for a second there. After Madasa fell and the smokes began to fly out. Oh, it does look like Runester has left the game. Might be, might have been a disconnect. Hopefully he can return in time or we will have to rehost. It does look like Madasa has called for a rehost. So we will be right back with the action. But again, very scary there for San Francisco State because that after the smokes went off, uh, BSU just stormed the site. But they were able to retaliate with shadows on that wall bang and fire, playing behind that deployable shield, being able to get two players. Uh, and also Breezy get denying from below. No drones, uh, I believe uh, no drones might have been watching that Nitro from below. And that Maestro cap from Madasa that was set up did not get destroyed. So it saw everything that BSU was doing. Yeah, it doesn't matter if there are any smoke grenades or not. That evil eye will see all. Well played from the defenders of SS State. You know, I'm curious of how Breezy got down below. If he was, in fact, down below. I think he was. Um, but if that was a C4 just tossed from a horizontal angle, that was a nice C4, considering you still had players, I believe, repelled on big window, cutting off rotations. But, well, probably. So, only after one round, you know, there's... Not a lot to to really talk about, you know. We did see BSU's aggression from that we predicted, uh, but we also saw SF State respond well and in in, in turn, like respond well to it. So we still got a whole map ahead of us, and I'm excited to see how that yeah. goes. And I just want to say, if you see on the screen, it might be, say a two zero lead for SF State, but it is actually only a one zero lead uh, in, uh, instead. So again, we'll have to see if BSU continue their aggression or if they will turn it back a bit and join out a bit more. But with their aggression, they are able to take a lot of map control early, which is very good for them. Yeah, and what they were able to do with the sort of map control using the vertical play of the Zoe, and I believe, the, did they have a buck? I don't remember exactly. Uh, I believe they did. Yeah, so if they did, they were able to, they are able to, from below, move out a lot of the oh no! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm mistaken. They did not have a buck. Their lineup oh, no was buck. Ash. Their Ash. It was Ash, Zofia, Zo IQ, Ace, and Gridlock. Oh, they opted to bring the Ace. That's right. So they couldn't do a lot of vertical play, but they could do some. You know, they tried to push Shadows out from behind Aqua Bar because Shadows was behind Aqua Bar for some reason. Can't necessarily say that's a great position to play, but but yeah, you know. Vertic verticality works both ways, not just top, you know, from above to below, works from below to above as well. So you hope maybe that you see more come out of it though. It didn't seem like a lot came out of it. They were I mean they were able to move the shadows out of position. He only took like 30 damage from it, but not a lot uh aside from trying to clear out their roamers. But in the end, Breezy was able to get back down there, I think at least and use a, toss a nice C4 onto the planter. Now, so we'll throw it to a break for now, and we'll be back when we're all ready to go on coastline again.
we are back into coastline apologies for the rehost but you know i only have to one round but we're gonna get right back into the action let's see where as so state takes up their second defensive round they're gonna go to kitchen service uh, standard site selection from S from SF State on coastline, going to the hookah first and down the kitchen. If they win the kitchen, I can only imagine they'll likely go bar, I believe. But BSU not changing their lineup, sticking to the same lineup as they did the first round. Runester actually bringing the rook this time instead of the bandit and breezy on the mira. Ooh, a six pick from Strippy. Ace to Sledge. They know that they're probably not going to need the hard breach on co that much. I mean, it's coastline. You don't need a lot of hard breach. Yeah, excuse me. Sometimes it's nice. You know, a lot of teams like to bring in Ace or Habano if it's a hookah. But Attackers if it's kitchen, and you know it's kitchen, bomb. you're not really going to need it. So the Sledge will be much better suited an attack onto kitchen service being able to open you know the vertical play that you that you can attain here at once you take control of master as well as uh, vip you can displace you can make it so it's on you know you cannot play inside the bomb set itself and you move a lot of defenders out of there so we'll see if boise state will be able to capitalize off of that vertical play get some free kills for themselves and how they'll end up playing with it but the defense is set up Looks like it's going to extend all the way to theater. They don't want to give them penthouse. They don't, you know, they they know that this is a weak point on this bomb site. They know that Boise State will most likely try to take control of penthouse. And they're not, they don't want that to happen. So they're going to dedicate a Mira and a castle barricade and some rotations line and opening up a lot of lines of sight so they can contest uh, Boise State. We'll have to see if BSU does take the uh, does decide to go for a penthouse, hit, penthouse push, but it does look like they're actually clearing from the west side of the map towards Sunrise and Aqua. So we'll have to see where it goes from there as literally no presence from BSU on the east side of the map. As the Zofia is on top of the roof looking down that square skylight as I believe BSU is now taking control of the VIP as Brenner Bear does open the hatch to showers in Penthouse. Yeah, part of me was thinking that they could have potentially noticed the, the heavy utility they, uh, the San Francisco State was dedicating to up above, and maybe they were rotating around to try to focus on the Sunrise side. Swiss trying to get a cheeky angle through the throne hole. Seeing if there's anybody that she can shoot for free. Doesn't look like there's anybody, though. That's going to be an impact used. But right now it's a standstill. Boise State's just going to hop back on drones and gather a lot of information. As I say that, Junkie Dog takes down a Runester. Already taking down the Rook over in Lobby. She just comes down either through Sunrise or into Cool Vibes and takes down that Rook. Early man advantage, I guess, for, for, for Boise State. That's definitely a surprising first pick. Yeah. We'll have to see if is fire can actually hold this site as oh the plant begins plant begins from karma as smoke grenades will come out and sf state unaware that this is going on oh yeah, my yeah. goodness it was just a one man on site madasa picks up a kill for herself but brenner bear gets fire for, uh fire on site no now it's gonna be have to the defense is gonna have to pull off one hell of a retake breezy gets a c4 kill onto strippy no more sledge but it's iq in kitchen who picks off or takes another one swiss actually never mind but that's brenner bear over in kitchen takes down shadows immediately traded out by madasa now it's only a 1v2 but she only has 10 10 or so seconds in order to find these last two kills Defender and successfully defuse you know get the diffuser run out gets karma 1v1 but there's no time left whatsoever a valiant effort but bsu equalized the round count at one apiece Heavy mistake from San Fran, not real, having no presence in servers whatsoever or hearing that plant go down as fire was the only one in sight behind those kitchen shelves as I believe the rest of the players were upstairs or in lobby uh, just holding for some push but BSU didn't bite on it and they just took service for free there. And without having that, and that's that smoke ban, you know, without having those toxic babes, you know, once those you know, the service door is open or the, the kitchen window is open. You can't delay at all anymore. So 
hopefully if, if they go if the SF State choose to go back to kitchen they'll bring different utility maybe not the mute maybe someone else that could be more self-sustaining perhaps a maestro they utilize the smoke grenades on attack so we'll have well that, that'll be for another round but they're gonna go to Attackers cool vibe they're gonna go to the bars this bomb. time you know that, that that last round went pretty bad so they're just gonna go to a different site entirely Lucy coming out from fire, hopefully to slow down the attackers of BSU as they continue their aggressive style on coastline. And we'll have to see how SF State elect to defend this. If they turtle, if they want to roam somewhere. It does look like Rune is actually blowing up the holes of the bar, so we likely will see play from lobby through courtyard into blue bar. Yes, th those holes make it nigh impossible to simply take office, open up the blue bar wall, and plant blue bar. You have, with those holes open, you have to take control of lobby. Otherwise, your attackers will just get shut down from that long angle. And we'll see how uh, Boise State chooses to approach this. There's a lot of utility going down near mud over by the beat bomb. You know, that's a common that you'll actually see off like a Wamai hold that corner behind his deployable shield. But BSU has never, so far, has not been known to only attack from one angle. They're going to put pressure from everywhere, you know, all aspects of the map. You know, office doors open. This IQ gathering a lot of information. She knows exactly what that Wamai has set up in the B-bomb corner. Brenner might be able to just call whether or not they should just go for a blue bar take. But if they do elect to do that, they will have to get control of lobby as Shadows is playing in security along with Rune in service. It does look like Junkie Dog has rotated over to the front side of the map and will put, put let his presence be known there. As I say that, he looks like he actually is going around to security as Swiss is holding the angle on Jaeger of Shadows. And it looks like they do know he's there. They do have a drone on him. Yeah, and you know, Madasa is also still there in office to assist, but Swiss is going to quickly enter but meet the fate of, you know, to Madasa gets the first pick for SS State. You know, the attackers actually seem to be very split up right now. Strippy's up above by himself, Brenner Bear's by himself outside Blue Bar Window, Karma's by himself outside office, Junkie Dog's over by Lobby. You know, they, they've got to make things happen on their own. Track Stinger's gonna go out and Karma's gonna meet back up with Renner Bear. This is only a minute, there's a minute 20 left on the clock, so there's enough time for Bo Boise State to make something happen here. Another set of Track Stingers going in, trying to cut off all the rotations for the defenders, as they just wait simply for defenders to walk into their line of sight. Very much so. Breezy still tucked in his corner with all his Magnus and Yeager devices and Mute Jammer to top it off in that B corner. Should be droning out the B bomb site, looking that looking to see that it is clear. As I say, that Breezy will finish off Junkie Dog. That is the Ash. Ash is no more. As Brenner, and as I say, that Strippy, Strippy falls to fire as just down to Karma and BSU. Fire gets another kill onto Karma as I keep talking. <laughs> now, now just Brenner Bear, hoping to push into Mudroom as Breezy still in his little hidey hole. You know, with the, in Waiting this situation, the in this situation, Brenner Bear can only hope to make it not a flawless round. Waiting for that, waiting for Breezy to pop out behind the shield. Just looking for one kill, that's all he wants, you know? Oh, and he will get it! Rune with the ballsy rotate. Will not succeed, but this is still gonna be an SF state around. Brenner hops the window and swiftly meets his end to Madasa. Quite an interesting round from BSU there. Like you said before, all they're all split up trying to make something happen on their own. Oh, no decisive take at any point, or no decisive decision making at any point as they were picked off one by one by San Francisco State. As they knew all the utility was there, the IQ has the IQ gathered that information that that somebody was holding in the corner of the B bomb. So they, but they still did not elect to go for any other type of push. But that also comes with the fact that they did not have a hard breach. That's true. Uh, without without the hard breach, and even if the mute, say the mute jammer wasn't a, wasn't a uh, a factor, having an hard breach to try to push Breezy out of that corner would have been useful. 
how well that would have, in theory at least, how well that would have worked out that round, who's to say? Now, what's interesting here is SF State's going to choose to go to Kitchen uh, rather than Hookah. Hookah's open. They can go Attackers there. But they're going to go to Kitchen instead, they and they're going to try to correct upon their mistakes and not let such an easy take uh, for... And not allow such an easy plan for Boise State. So, Fire is going to switch on to the Ella, but they're still electing to take, to bring their mute. It does look like BSU decided to bring a Capitao instead for those Fire and Smoke Bolts. Uh, looking to perhaps repeat their Smoke Plant potentially in service as SF State did go Kitchen instead of Bar, but it does look like... Or they went to Kitchen instead of Penthouse, sorry. It does look like SF State did extend back up into Penthouse this time, but did not bring the Mira with Breezy on the Ozzy now, being much more mobile. There are, Madasa on the with the castles opening up a lot of lines of sight across many different walls. So I'm interested to see they don't have the Mira this time for their kitchen defense. So I'm definitely curious to see how this will work out. Whether Boise State will elect to actually meet this defense head on, or will they do something similar than last time? Take control of Sunrise, open up service, and just smoke plant the defeat and just plant right under their noses. Intel gathering from BSU standard. Three people on roof. It sounded like a some sort of explosion went on. It was probably a breach in charge or All something right. to open up the hatch. Oh no, actually, it was probably... nothing was used. Yeah. Oh That's no, great. actually, look the the, the hard breaching tool. The hard breaching tool oh. of Capitol is gone. If you look He's at the hard breaching tool on the hatch, I, I mean, I, mean I, I guess you're not gonna really use it elsewhere here, so. Interesting choice. I like uh, it though. Interesting Using indeed, that especially new utility. With, especially with the Sledge, Zofia, and IQ with all capable destructing, destructible devices to take care of that hatch. Bard Barrow will be punched out as it does look like the attack is just kind of stalled right now. Uh, I believe they're just gathering into as the defenders of San Francisco State just sit pretty and hold angles, waiting for something to happen. Breezy still in mass or in theater with Madasa for support on those lobby stairs. As Swiss is actually Attackers on the platform in the courtyard, location. hoping Attackers to get an angle on meter. somebody and Junkie Dog Fire. as well. <gasps> Yikes! Firebolts go out from Karma and Swiss gets the opening pick onto Fire again. That's their only sight players. Trippy is now getting the diffuse down in the service door. Shadows really close, but cannot get the wall bank. And the diffuser gets successfully planted again. Rune's gonna eat a lot of damage, but he's gonna down Junkie Dog. The Ash is gone, still 4v4, but they don't know where the diffuser was planted, actually. Shadows, it's planted behind you over by service. And Madasa picks up Swiss. There's only three attackers left, but they have the diffuser down in time in their favor. Brenner's gonna take a lot of damage from Shadows, but they have to know by now where the diffuser is planting. Brenner gets a nice shot onto Rune and a double onto Shadows. And all of a sudden, this does not look good. Breezy's actually on the Diffuser. He's trying to bait out one of the last attackers. But he has to stick this at this point. And no proper coverage. And this is another Boise State round. The plant going down underneath the noses of SF State once again. Not making any sort of, any proper changes to their setup. We did see that bulletproof camera being put in kitchen, but I'm curious why, I'm confused why they spent so much time trying to fight the kitchen angle when they didn't see anything there from the bulletproof. Was the call not made? What, what was going on there? It There needs to be a change in, in their setup. They know, you know, teams sometimes are, are creatures of habits. They can get away, and also, the success that Boise State had, they got away with the easy plant their first time attacking kitchen service. Why would they not try it again? And it's, a, you know, it's on SS State. Why would you not adjust properly? Why would you not move that bulletproof over to watch service? Fire is one man. He cannot watch seven different angles being the sole person on site. So you need to think about the utility you are bringing and how to use it properly. Don't, teams won't play to your setup they will find a way to break it without, you know, if they don't have to go through the top floor to clear up, to take control of Master and Penthouse, 
then they don't they won't do it if they don't have to so adjust uh, adjust accordingly move the utility move the bullet and who know and then if the round plays out the same way then the round plays out the same way you cannot afford to lose these rounds because you fail to make adjustments as I say, we'll return to Hookah, their first successful defense uh, before our re-host, as we will see fire on the Wamai this time instead of the Ella. No score, no 1080 RPM Scorpion, but he will have the MP5 K in the stead. And those magnets will be much more helpful, in my opinion, compared to those Grishmont Mines in deflecting the utility that will be flying in from Boise State. As they yeah. do, as they do, elect to bring the capital once again. No ace this time, from Karma, but it is the capital. But those fire bolts are dagger. not exempt to the Wamai magnets, so it's a perfect counter for one another. Because before there were no counters to capital, ADSs did not zap the bolts, but these magnets will now catch them. So seemingly. The defender, uh, the attacker is going to work to roam clear out Reload. down below, and that's fire down there. He's going to destroy some drones and fall away and retreat back to cool vibes as one of the fire bolts from Karma goes out fairly early. More droning comes out from BSU, and more shots run out from BSU with that LMG, the M249. They're just trying to make sure that there's nobody down below that they have to worry about, at least in Sunrise. Runesteer is still overplaying by service, can easily make his, his presence known here on a kick onto Junkie Dog, but Strippy outside the kitchen window, so it looks like they are trying to cover all their bases here. And we did see Breezy on the Mozzie playing that similar angle as the kitchen when uh, the similar angle of top lobby stairs as he did move down back to security looking for a potential flank in office as Rune sits in kitchen hearing that window be opened by Strippy might potentially go for a runner. Oh, Karma actually just smoking and running into the site going in for the plant and will be reduced to death by Defender fire as well. Rune will run out and kill Strippy as well, but will be refracted by Junkie. But Swap as it. I say that, Breezy refracts Junkie, or refracts Rune Sir onto Junkie as Swiss is on the big window, knowing that my show is there again. Fire gets another kill under Burner, just down to Swiss now on window repel of the big of the big bull window. Fires another concussion charge as he will be lit up and run out on by by Breezy actually. And wow. as if they take a very decisive round, bringing the aggression to BSU that time. Well played. Th that round was well played. Much, much different than the last kitchen round. But the aggression that, that came out, the runouts, the jump, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm not sure what BSU saw on the bomb site to warrant trying to execute that like that. So much time left. You use all the smoke bolts, yes. But, you know... Fire was able to just go to the rotate and kill the planter. It, it, it was probably one of the freest kills Fire will ever see uh, in in his collegiate career. But now the attackers, are, our defense, is going to go to Blue Bar again for their last defense. Successful the first time they did it, so why not do it again? Forget that kitchen site as they have lost it both times. As Strippy will saw off the black show as Strippy will show the Blackbeard but switch back onto the sledge. As maybe Attack just to, to scare SF bomb. State there from peeking any potential angles. But we'll have to see if BSU is able to Attacker pull off a successful bomb. attack this time as they do have the hard breaching capability of Capital Attackers with that small little square bomb. device of his. Can blow open a vaultable hole, or a comfortable hole, I believe, too, onto the wall. So I can only imagine they will likely go for an office take this time. Uh, but it will be contested by SF State like they did last time. Definitely. I mean, with the, with the fireball, with the with bringing Capital here, there are obviously opportunities available. They could choose to use the firebolts or all their utility to just try to clear Breezy out of that corner over in Sunrise Bar. Or they can choose to use the smoke bolts to try to cover any sort of blue bar plant. Or, like you said, use the hard breaching gadget to try to open up part of the mud wall where Breezy would be sitting and take care and, you know, force him out that way. There's a lot of opportunity here, so I'm, I'm curious to see what Boise State choose. So they're going to, you know, hold some long angles here, open up some barricades, but... 
not gonna get too close. They're, they they are aware now of the aggression that can be brought from SF State, so they don't want to lose their lives early or give them up for free. It does look like Runer already took a little bit of damage as BSU are taking control of Hookah. They want to use that sledge and start opening up that those vertical angles to vertical angles to push anybody out of Sunrise minus. Minus Breezy, of course, because he is still hiding in that corner with his shields and all of his utility. Fire will likely be first contact for BSU. As Karma pushes out of Hookah and into the hallway, looking down 90 and VIP, clearing out the billiards. Vertical play will start from BSU, as you heard the breaching charges starting to go off from that IQ and the sled beginning to open up everything with his hammer. Indeed, that hatch was... But keep in mind, SF State have three Nitro Cells that they could lob up to uh, potentially kill any BSU member. But Asa throws a Nitro Cell, looks like she hit herself there for a sec, as she will take the fight with Junkie Dog and lose it. Yeah, that's not a great start if you're San Francisco State. This isn't going to look good, especially because the hatch was left soft. That's an interesting choice, but Rooster on the flank gets a huge pick onto Swiss. And right now, he's got to get away. He's got the M249 staring down luggage. Luckily, he does get away though. But they're worried. The, but now Bo Boise State is aware of his presence. He's gonna take a lot of damage from Cool Vibes. That's fire. Doesn't get a kill though. But he's just gonna do a lot of damage and get away with his life. Attackers drop. Rude still trying to take the fight with the SMG 11. That's a long range. That's a long angle. Not a very good weapon to do that with. Well, you know, nice choice. A C4 out. Trying to get an angle on that hatch drop. It's fire from Kitchen. Not a bad idea, but the attackers are seemingly collected outside of blue bar. Shadow's gonna do a lot of damage onto Junkie Dog, but Breezy takes down Karma. No more Capitao. Smoke bolts are out though, and the diffusers downed in blue bar. That's fire, getting the huge pick onto Strippy. He's trying to get traded out by Junkie Dog. Junkie Dog can't find it though. Brenner Bear's just gonna drop to Hookah Hatch, Hookah Hatch into Sunrise, but there's no defenders there to meet him. Here's those footsteps. But Breezy's just gonna hold an angle from his corner. It's a, it's a pretty nice long angle, but there's only 15 seconds left and not a lot of time. Shadows up above. Junkie remain. Dog falls. It's just Brenner Bear down in Sunrise. He's gotta make something happen, but he cannot. It's fire. And SS State win their defensive half, winning four rounds to two. Another good defense by SF State. Much better uh, coverage from BSU this time, actually taking control of that hookah and forcing a lot of the players out, but unfortunately could not win the gunfights as a lot of them do, as, as they do lose the round. However, I would like to point out that if they do bring a Kali and shoot one of her devices into the corner that Breezy is playing, that takes out pretty much everything he has. Yeah, that's true. Kali is still an operator in play, but, you know, it's a niche operator. Sometimes, not a lot, you know, if you can use that sniper rifle, that bolt action sniper rifle well enough, then go. Go go for it by all means. Um, but a lot of teams sometimes not, might not feel too comfortable bringing a Kali. Unfortunately, it didn't seem like Boise State was comfortable taking that Kali. That could, like you said, that could have been the answer to that to that setup right there. Yeah. Most definitely, Defender as that forces the Wamai out, the destroys his shield, damage. destroys his mute jammer, probably destroys a few Magnus and ADSs as well. But we will see. Uh, but now, BSU and SF State have swap sides with BSU on the defense and SF State on the attack. SF State looking for a potential roam clear with the Jackal and the flank watch of fire as well on the gridlock. Looks like BSU not shying away from their aggressive nature with. The, with Swiss on the Vigil and Junkie Dog on the Lucy. Lots of heavy gunners still with go. the utility of the Maestro and Brenner Bear on the Look at that. First round Boise State has on defense, the Vigil comes out. The Vigil was banned on Clubhouse and look at that. Swiss is trying to get a cheeky spawn peek. I mean, hopefully SS State doesn't fall for it. Doesn't look like they will. Swiss is just going to fall off the angle. But that Vigil was previously banned on Clubhouse, now is on Coastline. So we'll see if this is actually going to affect the roam clear as SS State. It looks what like nice they did have fights on there. Uh, Rune will take an early fight and actually Ooh. win it against Karma, the Jackal. Killing the Jaeger, and now Vigil is being tracked, and they know his position. They know he's an Aqua. 
and he will have to evacuate back to site. Although he is very close, so he does not have to move far. He's just trying to bait out the end of that Inox track, like track, because he's going to go right back to the same spot, trying to get an ang on anyone walking into that office door. And if you're not careful or aware, I think Rune checked it. I think he saw it. I think he's going to be smart enough not to walk towards this doorway right now. Or if he's going to do it, he's just going to do it from the far angle. Swiss, though, is going to hear the rappel sound, know that there's someone going to go to the aqua balcony. He's going to move off of that position. Play behind that blue bar, that ADS, and give to assist. Actually, it does look like SF7 is actually doing a split attack as well. I believe we saw two players in VIP. As Swiss will begin to take the fights with fire, the F90 versus the K1A. Uh, the F90 with superior fire rate and firepower, but that is to be expected with the assault rifle. Shadow's in VIP now. Uh, trying to drone himself out. Swiss still stuck behind this aqua bar, taking the fight with fire. Brenner Bear punching some holes, hopefully to catch some, get somebody with those. As Shadows begins to drone out the site, the drone will fall, but they will find info on Strippy in pink bar. Man. Swiss still behind this aqua bar though. Yeah, there's only a minute left in this round, and they still, the attackers still haven't taken control of aqua, but down below, that's the buck gonna do a lot of damage to Swiss, but Strippy falls elsewhere. And as I say, that fire takes down Swiss. That's aqua control, but there's still a lot. There's 45 seconds left. Enough time to make this execute happen. All five attackers, only two defenders left. You know, Brenner Bear has to take a fight here and win it in order to even slightly tilt this round back into their favor. 30 seconds left, plant has not started yet as Rune will find Brenner Bear just up to Junkie Dog now on the Malusi City and Vase. Smoke grenades will fly out as plant should be starting soon from Madasa. And there it goes, Junkie Dog looking to find the fight. Does down to Sophia, but it is Sophia. She can pick herself back up. The only attacker that can do that. And he will for now. be for now, for now. But he will, but Shadows will fall in the end as well. Junkie Dog, about 52 HP, is being bucked from below from Breezy and will be finished off by fire. A tall order to ask of him playing a 5 versus 1 there. It was a good effort though, but the C4 just slightly overshooting the target, doesn't deal any damage whatsoever to the planter. So, as the state, when they're first attacking around, increasing their lead to three rounds. And BSU not going to be put off by that. They're going to attempt hookah billiards again. Oh. And they're going to show a cap can. You know, you know, Alex, you know who can? Cap can. And if Karma swicks, six picks off of that cap can, I'm going to be very sad. Oh, why do you have to do that? I guess Jaeger is more important. Cap can is always fun to see if the attacker, if you know the attackers just like to run in without a thought as they will take, they will lose about approximately half their health after walking into a trap and he does get five of those. But Jaeger, of course, much more important than that to deny any projectiles flying into the faces of the defenders as they will elect to repeat hookah billiards with the same, uh, with almost the same lineup with Brenner Barrett going on to the, the location of a bomb. Doc, I believe, yes. I believe they, yeah, I believe they had a mute last time. So yeah. they're gonna take those Doc stims over those mute jammers. Uh, yeah. They I might believe that they didn't open up, they didn't try to open up the hookah bar or the pink bar wall. So maybe we don't need the mute jammers. So I, I would sort of like to see if this round Madasa, you know, if they if they are gonna follow the same attack strategy, use one on the VIP wall and then use the other two on the pink bar wall. That would be a nice change. You know, you always want to very like spice things up. I like to say, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again, unless it works. Swiss though, trying another cheeky spawn peek again. We'll see if anybody walks into his line of sight. Doesn't look like they will. So he's just gonna. Now he's just gonna go Drive elsewhere. Deployed. Very heavy presence from SF State this time on the west side of the, or I believe that's the north side of the map, sorry. <laughs> uh, looking to go for a hookah take this time as last time they did approach from ruins. Oh, Karma. And Aqua. Why do you gotta do this, Karma? Right now he's, using, he's doing this cheeky angle where he's hiding like in a pillow to try to get an angle on the mud door, but he got droned out, so hopefully they won't walk into that one. 
They know Karma's here at least, so we'll see how the, the attackers the respond. But Junkie Dog, not far off there to assist. He didn't take a lot of damage though. It's like someone's from the kitchen window. Yeah, that's fire. fire. That's fire. Uh, we'll have to see if Karma can get himself on the board. And as I say that, he falls to Breezy. Still zero kills for him on Jaeger. As Breezy very close to Malusi. It looks like he does hear him. We'll have to see if they if he pulls out the skeleton key. As he is droned out, he oh, oh. he's on drone. He did not hear him. I guess he did hear him. Junkie Dog swings and kills the buck. Un well, not even unfortunate. Just bad. You know, uh, that might have that yeah, might have been bad. Breezy droning for himself, sees the Malusi trying to get off drone last second. But now Junkie Dog's in a fight with two more SS State attackers and he's gonna get he's gonna get tracked by Jackal. C4 goes out, doesn't hit. But, you know, Junkie Dog is trapped effectively. And there goes the Inox the Inox tracker wears out, but he's still here. If someone goes to the courtyard, they might be able to get a lucky well, wall bang from behind the bar. There's only if they choose to do that, but there's only a minute left, and Runester finally takes down Junkie Dog. That's the Rome presence, presence seemingly gone, and he's gonna start doing some vertical play down below with that ITA uh, 12S. Oh, but Brenner Bear, I, see, I think, drops the hatch and picks off Runester. He does, and he's just gonna stem himself back up. Nobody is on site currently. If the attackers. The Strippy's the closest one. If they know this, the diffuser's been dropped elsewhere, though. Just on the hookah about. There's only 35 seconds left. Smoke go bolt goes out. Strippy unloads his clip. Doesn't hit anyone though. Gets a takes a lot of damage, but Swiss now able to assist on site. There is a window of opportunity, but that window has now passed. And only there's 20 seconds left in a 3v3. This diffuser has to go down. Swiss with a cheeky angle underneath the couch, shooting the toes of shadows. He's going to make his way into Hookah, pushing up really aggressive, but he's not going to get one. Ten seconds, Ten seconds left. The diffuser go. plant has to go down now. A C4 goes out, but doesn't go far enough. Brenner Bear trying to get a cheeky flank, running out of mud room. Gets one. The plant goes down, but he meets his swift end to Madasa. 6-2 now for San Francisco State. That was looking a bit scary for them as, like you said, the window of opportunity there that they could have just ran in because BSU had nobody on site uh, did fade, uh, but they do elect, but they are able to recover the round as Brenner Bear actually ran through those track stingers out of mudroom on the first floor up the stairs to get that kill, but was unfortunately finished off. Kitchen service now for BSU as SF State is on match point. Yes, match point, and something we didn't mention at the start of this uh, match, but the winner of this game goes to the open playoffs. The loser goes home, you know, sad because they couldn't make playoffs. So there's a lot on the line here. BS Boise State's going to have to win four rounds in a row just to send this map into overtime. This is their own map choice, and right now SF State is proving that they should not be messed with right now on Coastline. We will actually see a Yana for the first time coming out from San Francisco State as they will swap off the gridlock. But yeah, that's just additional intel for them bomb. just to have. But again, BSU bringing out a strange operator choice of their own in the clash of Brander Bear. So we'll have to see if that's going to be like a moving shield for one of the one of the fraggers for BSU or if they're just going to use it as a wall to gather intel on the attackers. Oh, the DSU actually did bring a lot of the heavier hops this time, both Rook, Maestro, Cade, and the Clash actually. All three all three armors with the only non-three armor being uh, Swiss on that Legion with his T5 SMG. It looks like they are BSU is boarding up the Sunrise. Don't want anything to do with that as they will be going for a different as they will elect to hold service more. Karma boarding up blue bar as well. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Uh, Boise State electing to reinforce all four kitchen walls um, and electrifying most of them and re reinforcing all three service walls are, uh, as well. And all five players are actually on site. So they're not going to they're not ex extending their defense like San Francisco State chose to. But, at, you know, as a result, that will give San Francisco free reign of top top the uh, top control to do vertical play. Definitely. With that buck, once SF State know that there is only 
or that <laughs> everybody from BSU is on site, they will take swift control of that. Actually, does look like Brenner did push into the lobby with that clash, of, clash of the bulletproof shield as Breezy will begin to work on the floor, almost catching Strippy there with the skel uh, skeleton key. Yes, but if Strippy didn't get off cameras, that could have been Reload! pretty bad timing, I do think yeah. myself. But they're gonna force the defenders out of their Sending anchor spots. Gemini and open up the bomb site for themselves, but it's that clash who can honestly, it might not affect them that much. It seems like a flank coming up from white stairs is happening. Uh, don't know who that is. That's Junkie Dog on the Rook. He's just trying to contest. I don't think he actually wants to go in, but anyone's trying to come, you know, if anyone tries to come out of theater, he'll, he'll try to meet them there. But it's the clash though. Pushed up against the service door. Trying to meet the attackers head on. Breezy goes down. That Swiss gets their opening pick. That's the vertical play. You know, working, you know, holes work both ways. So Breezy wasn't careful. Meets his end to the T5. Ducky Dog rotating back down to security to hold the lobby as SF State Deuce, or actually, he is spotted out by Rune with the Inox Tracker of Jackal as SF State are just kind of. Playing with the clash at front of in front of service, trying to figure out what to do. They do have that Zofia charge with the concussion, so they could do something there. But uh, we'll have to see if that actually does come to fruition. As Madasa is still putting on some pressure from the kitchen service door, but BSU is just sitting pretty on site with 30 seconds left. They they don't have to go anywhere. Oh, a potential nade coming out does do a lot of damage to the rook as fire just sprints in we'll have to see if he gets if he does get finished off and he will go down to fire with the uh arx brandon bear now being pushed 15 seconds left on the clock with four members still on site from BSU, or four members still alive on bsu and four members as to stay as i say that karma will finish off runster as the state continue to walk in and will be shot down by swiss Fire returns, but Swiss gets himself a nice three piece as a goo mine killer actually on fire as well and a knife onto Madasa. What an ugly end to this round that clash stopping everything in front of her. You know, I have to question what happened with the concussion charges for from the Zofia, because it looked like they had gone off, but because I saw that uh, the Zofia had her hand on her head as if she were concussed. So I'm guessing it was just a miss potentially. Um but that could have been the opportunity that they needed to finish off the clash and potentially get their plant down. But there was a lot of utility set up over in service to evilize one on each side of the doorway and the lobby and the might the you know Swiss on the lesion just being able to rotate into bathroom, open up a line of sight, go right on in, kill the attackers as they entered. So, I mean, it's still match point. That's one of four rounds that Boise State needs, and the second their tertiary bomb site. I guess is gonna be Penthouse Theater. Yeah, different from the Sunrise and Blue Bar of San Francisco State, but it does look like BSU is once again bringing the clash that did pay off for them greatly last round, along with the mirror to hold that Penthouse. We'll have to be careful as SF State is bringing the buck and that mirror could go out of order shortly in lobby from the buck. So we'll have to see where uh, Brenner Bear of BSU, who is playing the Clash, will decide to push or decide to hold. Imagine, uh, if I were, if I were on Boise State, I'd imagine I'd have Clash somewhere near either top main or holding down 9. Ten seconds to go. VIP will probably not work out. You could play in Penthouse, um, probably, but you, are not a lot of room. room. He's actually going to play Hall of Fame. You know, to my surprise, he's trying to meet them at the balcony. Um, that could work. That might not work. But we'll see how Boise State rocked. plays with it. Right. No denial, actually, from BSU as well. So if they do get control of VIP and if the ace is still alive. But Shadows will get spawn peaked by Junkie Dog as I say that. Uh, so that is Sophia off the board. Make it now making dealing with clash that much harder without those concussions and impacts as well karma playing downstairs as well inside the reception desk with that jaeger yeah i think karma wants to stop this buck for breezy from t taking care of those mirror windows from below it's the assistants you know working as a team like you said losing shadows is huge luckily they still have ace so if they want to do some 
they want to open up the VIP wall, they can. But there's Swiss over in 90, and Breezy falls to Karma. I'm not sure if he was either misdroned or just lost the gunfight, but Karma's gonna get one. He's gonna he's gonna just take it and go, fall away yep. a little bit. That was very likely a missed drone from Breezy as Karma will actually eat some damage on his way back up, dropping down to uh, 75 health, courtesy of uh, Runestar, I believe. Oh, Chunky Dog again, running out of Hookah and taking down Runestar this time. The aggression just will not stop from Boise State, but they know that they need to do this in order to claw their way back into their hopes of making the playoffs. It's just one round at a time, though. And that clash is there, gonna meet fire at the big window. Throwing out some track stingers, trying to hope to slow down Brenner Bear. But, you know, it's not gonna achieve too much on its own. I mean, in a 2v5 with a minute left, you know, fire and Madas are gonna have to make some magic happen. There's not even been any sort of pressure. It looks like these two are just gonna chill on the roof and talk about what is happening right now. This is, this is something you see teams like OXG do if they know that they can't win around, then they'll they'll use whatever time is left, talk things over with their team, and implement that into the next round. So, I mean, after winning two defenses, there's only going to be Pen... No, it's going to be Hookah and Blue Bar will be available. It's going to be one of those two bomb sites. So, we'll see. You know, they're going to just take the time and chat things over. We'll have to see if this t uh, this little break that SF State decided to make for themselves it pays off in the next round as the time is ticking down 15 seconds left and it does not look like SF State is going to elect to do anything. They're just going to sit pretty on the roof and hang Ten out. Seconds remaining. Madasa practicing some leg day hopping over that. Five you know, seconds remaining. Always got to keep the legs strong. But it's, it's got to be the clash, and it's what, paired with Junkie Dog's aggression. Junkie Dog getting two, you know, free kills of, like, a spawn peaks and a run out, and the clash just being able to stop the way the attackers and how they want to push them just by existing. So, I mean, that's two rounds in a row now. They still got two to go just to push this to overtime. And you believe SF State probably feels a little desperate that they want to just finish this off, nip this game in the bud and finish it off right here. For sure, BSU will need two more to bring this to overtime, like SF State did on Clubhouse. But we'll have to see if they did if they do six pick to the clash again. I was hoping that during that discussion time, SF State might have considered bringing a Kali just in case. But that's just me wanting to see Kali played, and they will swing, they Ooh. will six pick to the clash. This is likely to be expected from San Francisco State as Br uh, as Brenner Bear has played Clash the past two rounds and has been very oh? successful with it. Oh, okay. He might not. You know, it's working, Brenner Bear. Like, take the Clash and it's it's you you leave it up to the SS State to players to see how they respond. They haven't responded well so far, and we'll see if they'll be able to actually adjust and do what they need to do properly. You know, but you know, the attacker lineup that they have right now though, they only have such limited counters. They only have Zo with the concussion aids. And sometimes that's not even sure fire. The track stingers can work, but you have to dedicate two sets of track stingers on their own just to trap the clash and have her eat a lot of damage. That or you just have to take the 1v1 and brush her shield aside with melee, but if she's play if Brenner Bear's playing with his teammates, then that's not gonna be an option either. So the best bet right now is to either catch Brenner Bear with her with his pants down, or it's gonna be the concussion aids from Shadows. We'll have to see where SF State decides to attack from as we do see two players of them spawning in ruins. Or well, three players actually spawning in ruins. One person is just droning. I believe the other two spawn towards the frontal side of the map. As Junkie Dog will actually try to spawn peek again, but will eat a small small bit of damage for his uh, antics. As he continues to play in the sunri sunrise bar. Rinser will open up office and start his Inox tracking with Fire's drone moving into security. As we do not see a lot of uh, bottom floor presence aside from Junkie Dog and Sunrise, Breeze already sprinting into Blue Bar as now they do know that the Rook is in Sunrise. He will have to fight for his life or try to evacuate back up the cool vibes. It looks like he will be able to get away and fall back to base. Yeah, he's gonna get away with his life there, and that's the smart play. If you can, with the clash, if you can keep your man advantage up, 
then you're going to be in a better position to play off of Clash because you've already kind of lost one gun, quote unquote, in a way with bringing the Clash, so you don't want to lose any more than you have to. And defense looks like it's going to be a little bit more, a little tight setup. Swiss is the only one kind of out on the roam. Going to play around 90 hallway and Karma is going to get droned out in Aqua's. That's fire out on the balcony again. Still going to be able to play behind Aqua Bar, I see, with an ADS. And that's Strippy actually over in VIP. He's been droned out. He knows that he's, they know, the attackers know that he's in bookshelf. So he's just trying to take a fight here. They don't want to give up these areas of the map too easy. But the thing is, is that he's probably trapped here. Buck starts to do some work down below and Karma goes down in Aqua, but that's the Clash trying to protect, but the Super Shorty comes out from fire, confirms the kill onto Karma. So 5v4 for SS State and Rune's just gonna watch flank. You know, Brenner Bears though, he's just gonna be like, hey guys, I'm here, I'm not gonna let you guys in any farther. Especially with that Banshee next to the Aqua Door. Shadows is gonna go down. That's Strippy over in VIP. And it's Swiss actually to help out. Swiss with a nice flick onto Madasa, drops the Diffuser over in Hall of Fame. All of a sudden, this is not looking good. Runester running into some goo mines, just trying to help out, but Swiss running over to take the fight and gets it. That's a triple for Swiss, and Fire takes down Brenner Bear. That's the clash off the board, but it's just down to Fire and Breezy. The buck was seemingly down below over in jungle. He's going to have to push up Cool Vibe stairs, but he's going to go rotate over to what I think is going to be VIP balcony to try to retrieve that diffuser. You know, this does not look good for SS State, and Junkie Dog makes it look even worse. He's gonna get the pick onto fire and fall away. This looks that this is gonna be another Boise State round. There's only 10 seconds left, and there is Strippy with the kill onto Breezy. That's three defenses in a row for Boise State. And we're one round away from going to overtime. The clash proving to be far more difficult to deal with than we anticipate as us of state anticipated as that is three rounds in a row clash has picked and three rounds in a row boys of state have won and i can only expect it to be brought a fourth time with the with bcu now actually going to kitchen service once again and sf state if they don't win this round it's overtime on coastline it's, it's the same story. It's the clash, and it's the same thing with SS State that they're not adjusting. They're not changing anything to just simply counter the clash. And that's just, you know, that's concerning for me. It's like I would want to see something brought, something changed. You know, you, you know it's going to be kitchen. You don't exactly need a hard breacher. Bring an operator like the Collie, bring an operator like Capitao, you know. Or maybe some frag or more frag grenades. There's the sludge. There are some frag grenades there. But there, th you need to make an effort. This Defender clash is causing such problems for your uh, for attack. You know, you need to do something different, right, in order to in order to stop this. And it's going to be the same thing set up for Boise State. They're going to dedicate a lot of their utility, barbed wire, ADSs, both evil eyes as well as the clash. You know, they don't want you to plant in their it's the service doorway. SF State bringing much more soft destruction this time with the sledge and the buck, so they will have more than enough to open all the angles they want to if they take control of VIP. It does look like Brenner Bear is actually, oh no, he's just boarding up Sunrise. They want nothing to do with that. They're just trying to slow the attackers down as Fire will see that on his drone. But we'll have to see if this attempted vertical play from SF State, or this, my assumption is that they're going to be doing vertical play, works out for them. Junkie Dog going for another spawn peak as he has been this whole game with the Rook. Uh, but unfortunately, nobody spawning ruins. Breezy did elect to run, or I believe Breezy spawned ruins, but he ran all the way to the other side. Uh, and then he's now just joining himself in. As of state getting control of the upstairs site, hatch will be open to the showers. Four players of BSU on site with Donkey Dog in the office. You know what I what I want to see this round is I want to see some a different take. I don't I don't want to see this vertical play result in a service take. I want to see all this vertical play done, and I want to see it. I want to see a kitchen window take. Looks like a yellow ping comes out, and that's uh, Fire trying to get a wall bang onto what I think believe was Swiss playing kind of right underneath the kitchen window. You know, if they're able to open up, like, this floor above Kitchen is soft. If they can push out their defenders here or get those picks over in, by Vertical Play and VIP, then they will. They definitely will be able to...
cover the, the plant from above because Boise State's setup, they've elected to reinforce all the kitchen wall and shots come out from Roonster on the sludge. Does a little bit of damage to Karma, but not enough to take him down. So, but as I was saying, it's like they can probably easily isolate Kitchen considering that the defense doesn't want, doesn't want anything to do with Sunrise. All that they're doing is boarding it off. But again, we see here the pressure again is on the service side. You got two attackers out there. There's the Jackal of one, and I believe right, Medasa as well. And Swiss is going to help out Brenner Bear from over from the bathroom. And Swiss goes down to Roonster from above. There's that vertical play coming in handy, and he falls into a headshot. We keep doing some more work upstairs, though. Trying to cut off the Clash's, you know, ability to retreat. Breezy takes down Junkie Dog elsewhere. And all of a sudden, with a minute left, things are looking pretty good for SF State. You only got two guns left with Karma and the Ald uh, the 416 and the Alda. Because Clash still has that CCE shield up in front of her face, trying to hold off the attackers from service. We'll have to see if SF State take, a, take advantage of this man count as 45 seconds are ticking down with Strippy off site in that knock, knock. Uh, little plant garden there. Madasa will be opening up service actually, which will force the Clash to fall back, taking a lot of damage from Runester. Actually, and Karma eating some damage himself of his own. Oh, a nade will actually down the Clash, effectively a 2v5 now. For, B, uh, for BSU as Karma is very low on HP. We'll swing out and fall the shadows. Just essentially a 1v5 now as the Maestro can. will attempt to deny the plant, but I can only imagine it will be shot as the Clash is finished off by shadows. And this is looking good for BSU. The plant will attempt to be denied, but to no avail as the Maestro can will be shot out. It is just strippy now. It does find a kill on the shadows with the Alda, but four versus one is a very arduous task to pull off to bring this to overtime. Yep, and there's only around 30 seconds left to decide whether this we're going to see overtime or if this is going to be playoff victory for San Francisco State. You know, as the time whittles down, there's only so much Defender Strippy can do. So, and run out trying to get one on Repel. Does Madasa is definitely not paying attention there, but the attackers know where he is. And Strippy is soon to swiftly meet his end. Pre-fires come out, but doesn't land. And it's fires to, cl to claim this series 2-0 for San Francisco State. Yeah. 8-6, eight, or 8, sorry, 8-7 eight, on Clubhouse and 7-5 on Coastline. Very good rally back from BSU towards the end there with the clash pick, proving very difficult for San Francisco State to deal with. But they do pull it out in the end and achieve victory. So congratulations to them, and an unfortunate for BSU. But very good gunplay coming out from BSU. Their aggression did pay off, getting that themselves a lot of kills. Junkie, Junkie Dog being that uh, the pinnacle aggressive player, but Strippy, but Strippy is the one with the most frags at 10 on BSU. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely well played from both sides and a great series overall to watch. So... Yeah. You know, if you're an SF State fan, that's amazing because, you know, you guys claimed your playoff spot in the open bracket. So congratulations once again to SF State. But so that's going to be all from us today. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. You know, first time casting on the CR6 stream. It's been an honor. My name is BizHop. Again, I was joined by my friend Saturn here. And hello, I, hello. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. Maybe.